All right. Good morning, everybody. Today's date is April 3rd, 2024. This is a regular meeting for the members of the State Liquor Authority being conducted in New York City with video conferencing to our Albany and Buffalo offices. This meeting is also being live streamed to the authority's YouTube channel. You can also find past recordings on our YouTube channel. Present today are Chair Lily Fan and Commissioner Edgar De Leon. Uh, staff in attendance, General Counsel Shannon Kearney Sarfo, uh, Juan Herrera from Licensing Bureau, and myself, Secretary Roper. The next regular meeting dates are April 25th, which is a Thursday, May 15th, and June 5th. Uh, while in the meeting rooms, please silence your mobile phones and take any phone calls or conversations outside. Uh, no food or drinks, please. And uh, please do not touch the microphones when you approach the podiums. Uh, for New York City, the bathrooms. Uh, the Benz bathroom is on the third floor right out here. However, the women's restroom on the third floor is out of order. Uh, you'll have to go to either the second or fourth floor. Um, items will be called in the order they are signed in, first in Buffalo and then Albany and then in New York City. When your item is called, please approach the podium and identify yourself. Representatives should also identify the, their clients who are present with them. Uh, Chair, do you have any announcements? Yes, I have a couple of things. Um, this is just an update on um, our um, reorganization and hiring efforts at the agency. Um, I just want to um, sort of give you an idea of, you know, what our org chart really looks like. Um, again, I am Lily. I am the chair. Um, Commissioner De Leon is our um, uh, second vote on full board and um, a key person um, at this agency. The um, And then we have Shannon uh, Kearney Sarfo, who is our general counsel. Um, a couple other people that were in acting positions before um, are now, um, we've sort of gotten through the process and now they are officially in their roles. Um, Bill Crawley, Chief of Staff, Lisa Ogden, our um, Deputy Commissioner on Operations. And if you guys are dealing with LEAP, you know that she is instrumental in um, getting that um, under control. She's also been doing a lot of work um, helping organize Hearing Bureau as we continue to um, seek for um, leadership there. And we have a Deputy Commissioner of um, Enforcement, Joe um, Finale, who is now also in place. Um, this is probably news to you, is um, Maureen Hughes is our Acting Deputy Commissioner on Licensing. We're trying to do our best to get her um, officially into the role. Um, Donald Roper is our great secretary who is um, who runs full board and um, oversees Hearing Bureau right now. And then um, Paul Cronimo is our wholesale director and also our currently our legislative director. Um, in the zones, we have three directors, as I have announced before, David Solar, who's here in the back. Um, it's our zone one regional director. Jason Goff, is our, who just joined us uh, from chamber, is our zone two regional director. This is a new position that we've created. And Joe Clark out in zone three continues to be our zone three regional director. And the idea is that the three of them will share our community outreach and communication um, efforts and also share the responsibility of res responding to your FOIA requests, which, as I understand, have been brought up to speed and um, there is no longer a backlog there. So thank the three of them um, for their hard work on this. Um, Patrick Garrett, who is based in Albany, is our public information officer, so all press inquiries should go to him. Again, that is Patrick Garrett. Um, on the licensing side, I think that's more relevant to all of you. Um, we, under Maureen, has Mike Smith, who is a director, um, and um, Amy Mel, who is our Zone 2 supervisor. Christina North is our Zone 3 regional director, who is taking full charge of our backlog committee. Juan, um, 
Herrera here is our zone one supervisor, as you know, and Sarah Ashton is our permits um, supervisor. So that's the team, and um, I hope this is helpful information to some of you who is trying to reach us. Try to direct your communication to us um, responsibly and really only to the people who are in charge um, of the items that are relevant. Um, it's not helpful when you send eight emails and then we internally have to coordinate and figure out who should be answering. So I hope this roadmap um, is um, helpful. And then secondly, I just want to make a plug for um, the NCSLA, which is the national um, conference on state liquor administrators. It's a nonprofit that um, is, you know, and um, it's a association that is basically collectively 43 of the 50 states are members of such. Um, we have a lot of um, industry members, uh, practitioners, and also um, producers, manufacturers, wholesalers, um, retailers, you know, it's, a, it's a, really a, a great um, organization where everybody gets together and share ideas and knowledge. Um, I happen to be hosting and uh, to be chairing the 90th conference down in DC that's coming up in June. Uh, this administration is eager and um, excited to get uh, reconnected with uh, the NCSLA. We had hosted the annual conference four times, but the last time we hosted it was 1961. And so we are getting reconnected. We are trying to play a role in um, alcohol um, uh, laws and development. Um, in the next decade or so. And so um, again, there is going to be a conference um, in June down in DC, that's our 90th conference. And also, um, if you can't come to DC in June, please put um, sub mid September of 25, as we will be hosting the regional conference up in Buffalo. So that's really exciting development for us. And um, we look forward to seeing you there. Again, this is, um, you know, you can pay for a membership, but it's also a very educational thing. The website has lots of information, and so it's just a good place to look if you're not interested in enrolling as a member. All right, Donald. All right, so the, we're going to go to Buffalo, but the first item is 61D. It is a recognition of Michael R. Clausen upon his retirement from the State Liquor Authorities. So he's not present, but I've been told that he is watching the stream, so. Well, th well, this is a good thing to do, and I hope, if it hasn't been a tradition, that it becomes a tradition at the agency. Uh, and it's uh, in recognition of the many people that serve us all, and one of them is Michael. So this is a resolution of recognition and appreciation. Whereas Michael R. Klassen is retiring after serving the people of the state of New York beginning on February 28, 2013 as an investigator for the State Liquor Authority. Whereas through his more than 11 years of service, Michael has devoted himself to his duties with a sense of responsibility and integrity. Whereas Michael's services is characterized by his ability and judgment in the administration of the alcoholic beverage control laws and regulations, both in the field and in the office. Whereas Michael is held in high regard by his colleagues and this agency, and this great respect will continue to be held throughout his retirement. It is hereby resolved on behalf of ourselves and the entire staff of the authority that we hereby acknowledge the exemplary service of Michael R. Klassen to this agency and extend to him our sincere appreciation for his faithful service and extend good wishes for a happy retirement. And it is hereby further resolved that this resolution shall be formally entered upon the minutes of this meeting and that forthwith a copy of this resolution shall be provided to Michael R. Klassen. As a greater man than I once said, we make a living by what we get, that we make a life by what we give. I want to thank Michael for his service. I am sure that we all do. 
And I will also give a personal thanks to Michael Klassen, um, who um, everybody here, or maybe you know, a lot of the staff in Buffalo knows that that's my favorite office. They're always showing me lots of welcome and lots of love and welcome when I go there. And so um, Michael is one of those people and uh, we will miss you and uh, we wish you a lot of uh, happy times moving forward, you know, as you enter your fall of your life and could move on from us and do other things. And um, if you have time left, if you want to give us a part time hourly <laughs> commitment, we will take it. So <laughs> in the meantime, enjoy, enjoy the, your time off and um, we will stay in touch with you. Thank you. For the items, uh, next is 29, that is 9 Main Street, Beverage Court. Oh, are you representing them in Buffalo? Buffalo, come in. My client is there. Yeah, th he's coming up. Okay. Really oh, there you go. Uh, Bob Romano, Robert Romano, I'm here with Ed Hickey. Well, not here with, he's there. Um, this is a conditional no contest plea in the amount of $3,500, but we're here. Mr. Hickey would like to explain the circumstances that led to the incident, and we'd also ask you to consider a lesser amount. So, Have you been uh, licensed since, 19, since 1985? Yes. Wow, you look young for that. Okay. <laughs> I, will, um, I, I just want to point out that the report, the police report, um, while most of it is factual, if you break it into pieces, it's a lot different. The incident that happened within the bar was two girls began to yell at each other and the doorman immediately separated them, which is all we can do. Um, he, for, he got one of them to walk out the back door. He held the other one inside for a few minutes and then would not let her go out the back door. He made her go out the front door. And this is a row of buildings. So going out the front door, you're literally a half a block away from the back of the building. But she went out the front door. He thought that enough time had passed and everything was fine. Um, the girl that went out the back door went down the hill, so she was even further from the bar, 100 yards, a couple hundred yards. And the girl that went out the front door ran all the way around the block, down that alley, which was blind luck. I mean, who knows, she's parked back there. But she found her, and she apparently cut her with some sort of knife. Um, from there, the police report says we didn't report it. We didn't know about it because we, we stopped it inside the bar. They ran outside. If we wanted to hold the girl that, that ended up running out the front door and catching her out back, then I would be in jail for holding her against her will. She wanted to leave. There's nothing we could have done. Um, a $3,500 fine is quite a kick in the teeth. To try to prevent this from happening again, I now close the bar two hours early every night. I've taken all the music off the jukebox that anyone could, could get any type of excitement over. Um, basically, we're playing blues, and we're closing early, and the lights are up, and we're trying not to have it happen. But to be perfectly honest, if two people walk into any establishment in the whole world, and one of them wants to pull out a knife and cut someone, there's nothing you can do to prevent it. You can stop it, you can break it up, you can get the police there to arrest one of them, but there was nothing we could have done differently and I think that a $3,500 fine is a little bit of a kick in the teeth. Um, the, other, the other beef is um, we believe that if this was a multiracial crowd in the bar when they came in, it would have been handled much differently. For some reason, uh, people who aren't from the same walk of life as some of other people in the society, they're frowned upon. And when um, the police or groups of people in some cities see these groups, they automatically strike fear into them and they want to close down the establishment that has these minorities. Well, I don't think that's fair either. Um, people aren't going to stop going to bars. They're going to go to other bars. So um, I think that the event that I'm here for today was something that was tremendously unfortunate and it could have been a much, much worse. We're lucky that it wasn't, obviously, but I, I just... I asked for some leniency on the fine because um, the steps we've taken to prevent it from happening again are costing me quite a bit of money. Um, on top of the fine, it would be brutal. Thank you for your time. So can I ask you a question? Uh, the report uh, that I saw was that the woman was found unconscious on the back patio of the premises. Are you saying that that's not accurate? 
Yes, I'm saying that she was found on the back porch, but if you read further in the accident, it says that there was a puddle of blood by her car. Her car was at the bottom of the hill. So it happened down at the bottom of the hill, and then they came back to the bar to get help afterwards. Um, it was my understanding that the, the entire event took place at the car, but I'll take the police at their word that she was up at the car. I know when the ambulance came, she was back down at the car. So they must have gone back and forth. I don't know. I wasn't out there. But we didn't. The, the back of the bar, um, it's really well lit. I have two big, huge lights. I mean, it's like daytime out there. That was, you know, to try to prevent this type of thing. But it did not happen right behind the bar. It happened down the alleyway on the riverbank, which is five addresses down. Do you have any idea what precipitated the fight or the dis dispute? I uh, know it was just two girls. I've never seen the Hispanic girl before um, who ended up. I don't even know which one. I think she was the victim. Um, I've never seen one of them before. We don't let the other one in, obviously. Um, I don't have any idea. It was they just started screaming. The doorman ran over, got between them, walked one out the back door. It was okay. I mean, up until the stabbing, which is obviously a horrible thing. Everything was done exactly how I told the door man to do this. Is the perpetrator or the, her associate still trying to come to your bar? Um, though, I haven't seen either of them since, but like I said, we turned the music, we changed all the music and closed. We closed basically for the first month or so afterwards. I closed at 8 o'clock. Now I'm closing at 10 o'clock. So we're closing before most people come out at night. Okay. Um. It wouldn't offend me if you go back to midnight. I'm also putting cameras at work in. We have decoys right now, which I think they're on to me over. So we're well, we'll have... <laughs> OK. The members ready to vote. I mean, sir, you've been a licensee exemplar, you know, really great record since 1985. So and you showed up today and explaining the situation. I, I do think that it was. Not, it, I think you did the best you could. I don't think that you necessarily could have changed the outcome of what happened. Um, it's a very violent situation that happened to one of your patrons, but um, I'm going to uh, lower the fine to 2,500 if um, the commissioner would agree. Yeah, I do appreciate your coming and I do find you credible. And so I'll agree with the chair, 2,500. Thank you, I guess. Thank you to everyone. Have a nice day. That's it. Yep. Oh, guys. Next is 37, Ultra <laughs> Swank, Inc. Hello. Hey. You uh, go ahead and put your name on the record. Yeah. Um, my name is Carrie Lawton, and I own a bar called Lux Lounge. Um, I'll just winking in Rochester, New York. I'm not sure I'm supposed to be looking. Oh, right ahead. Okay, straight ahead. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am here for an incident that happened um, on or about September 16th, 2023. And um, apparently it was witnessed that one of my bartenders had served alcohol after 2 a.m. And it was brought to my attention. Myself and my manager met um, BCI Monroe, who reached out to us. And um, we met with him on 10 20, 23. And he showed us a video of one of my bartenders who, who unfortunately did serve after 2 o'clock. So um, we were disappointed obviously and that same day we approached that bartender and we told him the incident we told him he was no longer allowed to work at our establishment so that day we we took care of that um so i can't deny that it happened i saw it on film it was unfortunate um but we did take care of it immediately and i believe i um sent you um payroll statements showing that he was um, terminated as of the 27th 
Um, so, and he did not work that week before. And I also included um, a, our protocol, which clearly states that absolutely this is, that would be completely, not only against law, but against what we, um, what we uh, allow from our employees. So. Do you have um, written procedures to advise your your employees that last service is 2 a.m. in your town? Yes, it's in it's in um, our protocol, which we give to everybody. It's 25 pages long, but it is clearly stated on um, in two two places in this in this book. Everyone's getting everyone gets this when they get hired, and they have to sign a piece of paper stating that they read it and they understand it. <clears throat> okay. Have you been the licensee since 2002, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Again, I see no adverse history. I see your handbook. Um, I'm going to lower this to 1500. That would be I'll fantastic. Thank you. I'll, I will also approve 1500. Thanks for coming. Oh, easy. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. You'll get a letter, uh, email, with more okay. information about it. How long generally do you have to pay the fine? Is it? I. Uh, off the top of my head, around a month. Okay. All it'll right. it'll all it'll explain. It. It'll give you a date, and the and the email will give you like a specific date that is due by. But it is around a month. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next in Buffalo is 56 Liquor Tree Inc. Good morning, members of the board. Sean McKenzie, McGavern, McGavern Grimm. I'm here with Ms. Cower, the sole owner of Applicant Liquor Tree. Inc. Good morning. Uh, is there a protest there? There is. Yes. Okay. Can you come up, sir? Sure. There, there's a number of um, protests. So I, I'm representing a couple people, but there's some people here without counsel. So I'll let them start. Hi, I'm Lisa Harrison of 2034 Genesee LCNJ Liquors. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, you need to give me one more moment. All right. All right, go ahead. Tell me your store again. Uh, 2034 Genesee, LCNJ Liquors. Okay, got it. Would you like yes. to speak on the matter? Do you want to tell me generally the trend of your sales? Because I don't see a gross sales number letter here. Yeah, it doesn't she, mean. She, she sent them in. It's my fault. I, sh I can forward it to you because you actually did send in your letters, oh. your, your gross okay. sales in between meetings. Yes. That, that's on me. I can forward it. Uh, okay. All right. You can go ahead. Do you want to speak? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, at, the, at the last hearing, I was um, uh, mentioning about. Uh, the other stores uh, in in the area, the, um, Crystal Peoples wrote a letter uh, for the uh, 14215 um, area. And uh, we have more stores in our area. And for this new store to open, our sales are already been cut. I'm making like half of what I used to make. I recently tried to sell my uh, store 
and it's not even worth what I thought it would be worth. And I police my store, and with this new store, there's a lot of parking lot, and we recently, I recently went over to, I'm a resident of Chittawaga, recently went over again to the town board meeting and got two more names uh, signing against this store being brought over here, uh, brought over in our area. There's, I mean, any responsible of age person should have a place to go. But right now, there's just too many. It's over flooded in the area. Um, I, I just don't see another need for a store at this time. So I, I just really wanted to, uh, you know, say that my sales were down and there's already so many stores in the area already. So that's all I really wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming again. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Kamal Mathan. I'm from 2675 Union, Union Liquors. Oh, sorry. All right, sorry, go ahead. I'm from 2675 Union, the Union Liquors. Um, yes. This is repeating what Lisa said. There's a lot of stores in the area. Don't really see a need for needing one. I'm a new store. I've only been there for two years. Still getting like used to everything. Um, yeah, I just don't really see a need for another store in the area. Okay. Good morning, members. My name is Jacob Pierkowski. Um, I'm here on behalf of two uh, local stores that are uh, opposing this application. Um, I have, I'm joined by Gurmeet Singh of 2551 Harlem Road Liquors, Inc., which is uh, DBA Town Park Liquors, and Surrender Singh of ESL Buffalo, Inc., which is uh, DBA Eastside Liquors. The, the simple reality here is that if this store is approved, we'll have nine stores within just over a two mile radius. It's simply too much. Um, there's eight stores currently, and from the sales numbers that I've submitted, sales are down. Um, ESL in 20, from 2022 to 2023 has dropped roughly $130,000 in gross sales. And Town Park, well, uh, slightly up between 2022 and 2023, excuse me, is down about $17,000 this year when compared to 2023. There's a handwritten note on the gross sales letter explaining that. Um, traffic counts are down in the area, and we're not seeing significant growth. To add another store is going to cannibalize the existing stores. It's only going to drive away or pull away from sales. Uh, it's not going to add anything to public convenience and advantage. I'm just curious, how do you know traffic counts is down? Um, in, in the letter that I submitted, I um, submitted DOT data. Uh, that shows that traffic counts went down from, there's a, a pinpoint right in front of the store, uh, if you go on the, the LAMP website, and traffic counts went down from- In front of whose store? Uh, the applicant's store, okay. the, the proposed premises, I apologize. No, that's uh, Traffic enough. counts dropped from 23,753 to 22,581. It, it just is indicia that the area is not growing. There's no significant development in the area. Um, we're not seeing, uh, there's certain pockets of Western New York that are having a lot of growth and development. We're not seeing this in Chictawaga right now. And to, to bolster that, we've submitted five separate letters, uh, one from the Chictawaga town supervisor and three from local council members, as well as a council member in Buffalo who has one of, whose district encompasses one of the closest stores. They all say the same thing. There are too many stores this will not serve public convenience and advantage. There's nothing here that's going to be noteworthy or new uh, to, to add to, to serve the public. Right. And, and frankly, in applications I've done in the past, and I understand that every application is, is subjective, 
but the board has denied similar metrics. So I think seeing nine stores in two miles is too much. And so for those reasons, we're opposing the application. Sir, you submitted gross figures uh, for uh, for East Side for 2023? Yeah, it's in his letter. So Town Park, I just want to clarify that the numbers are going up. They were from 2022 to 2023, but they're down this year by about $17,000 for January and February. Comparing to January and February of last year. That's right. That's right. So we're seeing a trend downwards, even though there was a spike between 2022 Do you think it's weather related? Because you've had a lot of snowstorms this year? Um, we've, we've really had one that was about a week in January. I think it's been a fairly mild winter, respectfully. Okay. Maybe that's just a, a Buffalo delusion. I don't know, but it's, it's my kids have not missed a lot of school. Or maybe so. it's because of the bills. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Do you guys want to speak? Do you guys do the store owners want to speak? Or no? Do you want to say anything? Oh. I, I think they're all set. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh. All right, do you have any um, responses to the um, to the opposition? We've, we've read your letter and your application. Uh, I, I certainly do, and thank you for this time this morning and, and for your courtesies and consideration. Uh, I'll start off by saying uh, just the plain fact here. Um, factually, what Mr. Peter Kowski said isn't true, according to the GIS and LAMP data. I'm looking at the summary report for the State Liquor Authority that I received through a request to the board that lists the five closest stores in order of distance. There is one store within two miles of the proposed location, and that is Town Park Liquors, whom it has been noted that the sales did increase 2021 to 22 and 22 to 23. Uh, there are also, according to a search in the GIS and LAMP systems for the State Liquor Authority, there are only seven licensed liquor stores in the entire town. There are one within two miles and four within three miles. So I would like to, apart from just noting that at the outset, because I feel that it is very relevant, I'd like to talk just briefly, I'll, I'll say that Ms. Cower, the sole owner and op proposed operator, has significant experience in the industry having worked at stores for the past 11 years. This proposed location is also in a, what we consider to be kind of a traffic nexus in the town of Cheektowaga at the intersections uh, of Walden and Broadway and Harlem Roads. It would be situated in a plaza in which there's also a Topps Market and there is uh, other anchor stores such as uh, M&T Bank and Value City Furniture. And I think that's relevant when we're talking about the types of stores, the closest stores with whom the proposed applicant would be competing. Now we'll look at Town Park Liquor. Town Park Liquor has 944 square feet of retail. Now, if you look at their revenues and their gross sales according to retail, they're doing a pretty good business, okay? But I would notice, I would note that also that Town Park is uh, kind of a, it's a different store. It's a standalone store. It's, it's not in a plaza. So when we're talking about putting Liquor Tree into the Tops Plaza, and I would note, as set forth in the a letter submitted by the proposed landlord, there was a liquor store in this plaza that was in business for over 40 years that closed somewhere in the 8 to 10 year period ago. So it wouldn't be as if this area has never had a liquor store before. But I digress. 
I'll know, I'll know go, go to uh, the wine cellar, which at 2.2 miles is the next closest store as proposed. Uh, I see that it was purchased in 2022, or the license was transferred in 2022. From 2022 to 2023, their sales increased by 50%. Now, that's in a store that has 4,000 square feet of retail space. The proposed premises that my client would like to open would have 2,500 uh, 2, square feet of, of retail premises. And I'll also now mention that because we kind of look at the stores uh, of the wine cellar and Union Wine and Liquor it is kind of similar types of what would be competition. The wine cellar has 4,000 square feet of retail and, and Union has 5,500. Okay? If my, my client's store would have about 2,500. Now my client realizes and appreciates the fact that she's not going to be able to buy on a level that she'll be able to be competitive on what would be considered the staple brands for liquor stores, like your Jack Daniels, your Crown Royals, your Jamesons. She's not going to be able to buy 100, 250 case drops. So what her business model, her business plan supposes is that she will focus instead on some sort of a niche market where she's going to stock a lot of highly differentiated, high level bourbons, scotches, and tequilas that you can't find at Town Park or at ESL or at LCNJ. You might be able to find them at Wine Cellar or Union, but it's going to be that is going to be the 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 point of sale for them to bring in a different kind of crowd. They're also highly focused on imported wines, specifically wines that don't have the, the greatest shelf representation in other local stores, being Chilean, South African, and Argentinian wines. So now, can you talk about can you talk about your client and tell me why she should she's a she's she, in terms of fitness and character? Well, in terms of fitness and character, I would miss Cowers here and would be happy to answer any questions, the specific questions you might have for her. Uh, but she she is well acquainted with the business. Her prior residence in California, she had been working at a store for about eight, nine years yes. and has since been working at uh, Midnight Liquors as the DBA. Um, it's um, what, what's the corporate name for Midnight Liquors? It's, it's Sunny Liquor. Sunny, Sunny Liquor LLC, uh, DBA Midnight Liquors. She's been working there for the, for the past several years. Uh, so when she, she had, worked at a when she worked at a home healthcare aid, she also worked at a liquor store in California. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then your husband owns Sunny Liquor. Yes. Okay. All right. How far is Sunny Liquor from the store? Uh, it's pretty far away from that. I, I don't have an exact figure. How far figure. is pretty far? Um, well, what's the address of Sunny Liquor? It's 3167 Eggert Road. So Edgar how long Road, does it how long does it take to drive from Sunny Liquor to this location? It's about fifteen to twenty minutes. Okay. They are in different towns, and it's yeah, it's in Tonawanda. Edgar Road is Tonawanda, and yes. Chief Dewa will be the next. Okay. So given. Given the amount of retail space that the applicant is proposing, it, it's significantly di differentiated from, from Town Park because it, it would be considered a destination location. And when we're talking about public convenience and advantage, I, I think that factor is important. I respectfully submit that it is because typically, as you know, my family has owned a store next to a Wegmans in, in Amherst for, for 45 years. I know people like the one-stop shop. So 
you know, it, it would serve the public convenience and advantage. We've shown how it's different than Town Park, and by the way, Town Park sales are, are great. Okay, uh, sir, we, can we talk about the uh, source of funding? So the investors are the principal's uncle? Yes, ma'am. And cousin, and one of yes. them owns a store? Yes. No, uh, the one is uh, on the uh, construction company, and the other one is uh, on the store. In New Jersey? But he's not in the New York State. And they're both based in New Jersey? Uh, no. Uh, the, uh, my uncle, he's in New York, and uh, my cousin, he's in New Jersey. But I would respectfully try to clarify, they're not investors, they were donors. Yeah, Chairman. That's, that's my gifted money. <laughs> Okay, but one of the donors own a store in, it's in the business. In New Jersey, yes, correct. Okay. Okay. So the husband was the owner of Sunny Liquors? And still is, yes, sir. Still is. Yes. And the applicant... Was it also a, an owner of Sunny Liquors? No. no. An employee. An employee. And correct. she submitted she submitted a letter saying that she's resigning from that employment. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. In the application, it says that you are an owner of Sunny Liquor. So I, I would note, and, and not that it's an excuse at all, I was not the attorney who submitted the letter, and there's a reason I'm, I'm here today. In fact, uh, it there, also says that she's the owner of the liquor store in California up to 2021. No. She was not. And, not. and there were a few errors that, were note, that are noted. Uh, for instance, when, when Mr. Brown listed the four clo the closest stores, he listed grocery stores rather than liquor stores. Uh, Ms. Cower has not, was not an owner of Sunny, no. is not, and was not an owner of the liquor store in which she was an employee in California. Uh, you know, I would submit that the better practice would, would not be a letter that is not sworn to and signed with an electronic signature, but an affidavit signed by the applicant, something that we as an agency can look to hold the person accountable going forward. I, I would suggest that that's the better practice. <laughs> You also have a situation here where uh, apparently the town and a council member oppose this application. Could you speak to that? Yes, I would gladly speak to that. The supervisor who wrote that letter is not the supervisor anymore for the town of Cheek uh, And Wait, I wait, spoke with but he was, the person was the supervisor when the letter was written, right? That is correct. I have spoken with the present supervisor, who, uh, gentleman Brian Nowak, several times uh mr nowak expressed a reluctance to rescind something that his predecessor had done uh however i would also note that in the body of these letters and i only saw two if there were two more submitted in between hearings but the language contained in the letters is the same and i respectfully submit it relies on the same incorrect information that was put forth in opposition to this application. Uh, the, the factual basis that it states, which was, I would respectfully submit all indications are, it doesn't look like it was even written by these individuals, states that uh, the, the distance from the stores and that it doesn't serve the public convenience in a conclusory and rather unsupported fashion. But the factual basis upon which these opposition letters are submitted is incorrect. So, I just want to clarify, the current supervisor did not write a letter, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, if the uh, funding for this, um, I see a, a $60,000 investment and a $20,000 investment from family members with no consideration at all. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct, yes. Is there any kind of a promissory note, or payment no. of interest, or anything? Nothing at all? No, there is not. And gift and letters they, were submitted. Gift letters? Mm -hmm. Yes. Indicating that these funds are not to be paid back. Um, 
do not expect this gift to be returned or repaid. It's not a loan, it's a gift. Okay. Are the members ready to vote? Excuse me. Yes. Sure, Mr. Bukowski. So I apologize. I, I've never asked to rebut uh, an application like this, but I think there's a significant issue here. I'm looking at the uh, the GIS report, and I see eight stores within 2.04 miles. I, I don't know where the difference is in the data here, um, but you heard from three applicants who are all within two miles or excuse me, three licensees were all within two miles. Uh, these people received sent in gross sales letters because they are the four closest stores. I think there is a real issue here with the data, and I'm not sure, I don't know why it's so different, but I'm looking at the data from the website, and it shows eight stores within two miles. I think that's very significant. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Six letters. Then. Six within two miles. I understand your data is different, but according to our records and according to the application, which I just want to set the record straight, is that there are at least five stores within 3.5 miles. So that's what we're going to go with and vote on. Yeah. You want me to go? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I certainly appreciate your uh, application, but I have to say I do have some concerns. As I look at the gross sales figures, uh, Three out of the five submitted show uh, decreases in sale. One is a very significant decrease. And while the two others show uh, that the gross sales have gone up, and that's a comparison from 2023 to 20, 2019, wherever possible, because of the COVID years. Uh, th th you still have three out of the five showing a decrease. I'm very concerned about the town supervisor and the council uh, member opposing this application. And uh, the unsworn letter with the electronic signature is, is not persuasive for me. I, I do believe the, letter, the better practice is a sworn statement that we can hold uh, uh, the applicant accountable to. Um, and, and also I'm cognizant of the opposition in this case. So for all those reasons, I'm respectfully gonna have to deny the application. And Chair. I'm going to agree with the commissioner. I'm not going to find public convenience and advantage for this application. Um, I'm going to vote to deny as well. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. Uh, next in Buffalo is number five. El Rancho, Inc. Number five, yep. I apologize, members. Uh, Jacob Pierkowski again for El Rancho, Inc. Uh, the, I emailed secretary's office. My client is unable to be here. She lives in Watkins Glen, which is about three hours away and has a new baby. Um, who's certainly happy to adjourn this if, if the board would appreciate her presence. Um, but we're just here at a CNC um, seeking a penalty of $4,000. Um, the facts presented are rather serious. There are some serious immigration and labor law violations here. So um, it would be helpful if she came, but if you're saying that she cannot come at all, then 
what do you want to do? We can adjourn it till um, April 25th on Thursday, but I imagine three weeks from now, the baby is still young. Yeah, the, so. the, ba yeah, the baby's four, <laughs> four months old. And um, I, I, can, I can offer that the, the individual who's the subject of these allegations, which is the, the manager, my understanding has um, been deported. Uh, he was fired from any association with the restaurant. It's my not point. really about what he was doing. It's about what she was doing, where she's paying him off the books, providing room and board as compensation. Presumably, she knew that he's not authorized to work. And, you know, the state is taking a new look on the way we, we treat employees. So there's definitely some concerns here. So do you want to bring her or you want us to just decide today? It's up to you. If, if the board would be inclined to accept the $4,000 penalty, uh, that's, that's what we put forth. It, that would, that's what we're requesting. Um, but if the board would appreciate that she's here, I will ask her to, to, I think what we're saying is that we're not inclined to accept the four thousand, but if you wanna if you wanna take a counter and, and bring it back, um, you can certainly do that or we can adjourn it and um, have you come in three weeks. But sure. three hour uh, drive is a lot, so and, and she understands that this is this is a part of this process. I just uh, uh, I, I guess at this stage, maybe we can adjourn this and I can have her come back and we can uh, bring this issue okay. before you again. All right. Um, April 25th. It's a Thursday. Thank you very much. And Commissioner, you're okay with that? I'm fine. April 20th. 25th. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next is 26. 322. 3220 Seneca Street, Inc. Hi. My last, last appearance before you uh, this morning. I'm, again, Jacob Pierkowski. I'm joined by Dan Hosler, who's the principal of the licensee 3220 Seneca Street, Inc. Um, we're here on a conditional no contest plea. We've put forth a amount of $1,000. The bartender who is the subject of this has been uh, terminated. She's no longer there. We make no uh, excuses. She did allow the investigator to take a drink outside, which was prohibited and not part of protocol. Um, I know. So this is tricky. So you sell food, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. This is tricky because you're allowed to do drinks to go. You just have to put a lid on it. Yes, I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. She was, uh, she's just, she was a young employee. I, I, we're having trouble finding people. And... Yeah, well, it's fine. Okay. All right. I'm going to lower this to 500. Uh, in Thank you very much. In recognition of your 18 years of um, being a licensee and uh, what I see is a pretty good record, I will concur with $500. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, members. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, yep. Next in Buffalo is number 60, JMT Hooligans, Inc. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Justin Giuliano. Uh, I am the consultant that assisted JMT Hooligans in the processing of their application. Uh, I have with me today, to my right, uh, Mr. Michael Tassione and uh, Tony DeRosa. Uh, Mr. Oliva, the third principal, is on a uh, well-deserved vacation with the family in Disney World and was unable to make it. Um, and we are here in front of you today to uh, answer any questions that the board may have pertaining to this application and to hopefully lay to rest any concerns that the board has uh, regarding the issuance of this permanent license. Um, who's the one with the cancellations on the record? That would be Mr. Tassio. Okay, and can I, you just tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, so I, w I would like to state that initially this board hearing was slated for March 13th. Uh, Mr. Tassio was out of town, uh, which uh, made me request the um, movement of our hearing to be today because Mr. Tassio does 
uh, understand the importance and, um, you know, seriousness. It's okay. You can uh, just tell me about the cancellations. Okay. Um, so the, there, there were some issues back in um, August of 22 uh, under the management he had brought in uh, spring of 22 after a long-term manager had uh, left for a, another uh, opportunity. Um, this is at a August, different establishment. This is, this is over at, uh, it was East Coast Entertainment um, and doing business as City Tavern on 384 East Ave in Rochester, New York. Um, when these issues uh, happened in August, um, later on, the city officials had asked Mr. Tassio to attend an informal meeting to address the concerns that they had regarding the establishment. Um, Mr. Tassione, uh, being a responsible owner, did attend that hearing and took into consideration their concerns and ultimately made the decision that due to you know, lack of business, some other issues that were going on in the city of Rochester with you know, criminal element and the spike and some of the crime that was going on, he ended, he ended up coming to the determination along with the other two principals that it would probably just be in his best interest to close the doors, which he ended up doing and um, ended up calling me uh, on September 21st of 22, uh, which I then took the ride to Rochester to pick up his license in order to then surrender the license for refund. I understand. So how long did you have that license? Really just, I mean. So Mr. Tassione was the licensee at this establishment. And then after COVID happened and things kind of got slow, he ended up turning his previous license in. After COVID, he then refiled under the same East Coast Entertainment LLC and then got the, got the new license. So he was actually at the premises for several years, but this actual license was only for a few months. He did not understand the concept of actually putting the license into safekeeping during COVID because of the slowing, slowing of business. So he ended up um, getting, you know, okay. not necessarily good information, and he surrendered his license for a refund. Okay, I understand. So the license that was active from 14 to 20 is the same location that was active from 21 to 22, right? That is correct. Sir? That is correct. Okay. And then East Coast Tavern and East Coast Italian, those are different locations. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, East Coast, East Coast Entertainment and then East Coast Tavern are, are two, separate, right. uh, two separate. And you've had a hooligans before. You're going back to that brand. He's, so he does still, he is still a licensee. Him and Mr. Uh, DeRosa are actual licensees. Is hooligans East Coast, uh, East, East Grill? Uh, hooligans East Side Grill. East Side Grill. And that is located in Webster. And that establishment has been open and operating uh, for 19 years, coming up on their 20th. Okay, so and this also, is the second location of the same brand. That is correct. Um, right. Mr. Tassione right. has also been a licensee since 1993. Okay. You... All right. Um, thank you for answering the questions. Um, sure. And with the senator's report uh, support and the town supervisor's support um, um, and experience in this uh, branded restaurant, I'm going to vote to approve. Okay. Commissioner? I concur with the chair, and I will also vote to approve. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And last in Buffalo is number 15, Calls LLC. Good morning. James Morrissey representing the LLC. And my client, uh, Abdul Nasser al -Hain. This is a, uh, a proposed uh, conditional no contest. This is number 15. 15. Um, His licensee did not disclose door that leads to a home license. Yeah, that's it's a door. door. It's a door. And it's All right. Now, right? Um, I am going to lower this to 1500. Commissioner? Thank you. I approve 1500. All right. All right. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Report or doors. All right. All right, uh, Nicole, that's it in Buffalo, correct? 
That is it in Buffalo. All right, you can uh, sign off. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so normally we'd go to Buffalo, but we have an interpreter here for a bit of time. We okay, let's do that. Items. Sorry, Albany. Um, so first will be 61A Restaurant Sabor Latino Bar Evita Inc. Good morning. What number? Sorry. 61A. Okay. 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 All right, put your name on the record. Your name. Hi, my name is Miguel Angel Vasquez. Uh, Hola, mi the, nombre, I'm sorry. Okay. I am the owner for Sabor Latino Restaurant. Okay. Put your name on the record too as the entry. Aurelia Garcia. Thank you. Patrick Okay. Mr. Vasquez uh, has been operating this premise since July of 2023 without alcohol. Um, the place had not had a license in it since 2022. Um, he is primarily a restaurant. He's looking for early closing dates, uh, closing hours rather. Um, and, what time? Uh, he, during the week, he was looking at 11 and weekends too, if possible. All right. Um, I'm okay with that. I mean, there's a strong police response in opposition and, and it is a gives on. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. We have a very strong letter from the police chief from Spring Valley who is opposed to this issuance of this license. They did come into his location and they indicated nothing. They said everything was okay. I know, but they wrote us a letter saying not to give him the license. However, have you seen that letter? No. Do you want to go look at it and respond and if you, if adjourn you this? Minute, uh, I don't know about adjourning, but but um, would uh, this is not an application. All right, give him a copy of the letter and then second call. I, I feel bad. Is it okay for you? What's the interpreter's name? No, uh, can you wait? Because they're gonna look, read a letter and come back. Is that okay for you to wait? We have three yes. more applications that need. Okay, anyone, great. So. so, all right, let's, uh, can you go read the letter and come back? Thank you. Thank you. I'll print it out and then they can get it for you. All right, uh, we need you for a couple more. I'm sorry, Miss Garcia, yeah. Uh, next is 54 Cafe 593 Court. Buenos días, mi nombre es Marta Cuauhtle, estoy aquí por Café 593. She's the applicant? Marta Cuauhtle. She's My the applicant? My name is Marta Cuauhtle. 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 Cuauhtle, Marta Cuauhtle. Is she the owner? Is she the applicant? Tú eres la dueña sí. o eres la, no, la dueña? The owner. Okay. Um, this is a recon? Is this a recon? No. No, oh, what is it? 54 Cafe. This is a uh, new on premises beer wine. Oh, it was granted it was recon because it was not. Okay. So you have stipulations with the community board. Civilization. You made an agreement with the uh, community board of. Yes. Okay, so you agreed with them that you will have background music only. No, música bajita, so para que gente coma. 
I only have uh, music. Pero so, es un radio, según so, uh, Radio. Yeah, yeah so that is considered music. background recorded music? Eso se considera musical. Yes. You don't have live music? Tú no tienes otra no. You don't have karaoke? No. No. You don't have dancers coming in and performing or anything like that? No. There's no amplification? No. There's no jukebox? No. Okay, so in our terms, that is called background recorded music only. Okay. Oh. And you agree to that, right? Okay. Yes, the music is always uh, low volume. That's fine. And you're closing at 11 p.m. every night? Yes, 8 to 11 every day. Okay. So you have to stick by those hours because you agreed to the, with the community on that. If you go beyond that, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be good. So you understand that? Okay. Okay. You okay? Do you work anywhere else? Does she work anywhere else? Do you work anywhere else? Tengo medio tiempo de limpieza. Part-time as cleaning. Part-time as a... Cleaning. Do you have... Cleaning in Con Edison. She works for Con Ed. Con Edison? She's a Con Ed employee? No, no, no. It's a company. By other company. Okay, so she works for a company that has a contract with Con Edison? Yes. Okay. Tú, eh, la compañía tiene contrato con, mm -hmm. con Edison. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And how many hours you work there? ¿Cuántas horas trabajas allí? Cinco, uh, 20 horas a la semana. 20 hours each week. Okay. And how is it you're going to be at this location full time if you're working there 20 hours a week? ¿Cómo es que vas a estar That's en tu negocio uh, tiempo la, completo cuando no, tú trabajas es allá estoy, medio tiempo? Uh, a veces mi, mi esposa y mi hija me ayudan. Okay. Some, sometimes my husband and my daughter help me. Husband and daughter? Yes. Esposo. Yes. yes, husband and daughter. Okay, is that on the application? Eso está en aplicación. No I'm not remember well. So la aplicación no es aquí, es sola. So yo estoy sola, so mi esposo. In the application, it's only me and my husband because I'm married. You are incorporated as Queens TWNA. Can you repeat, please? You're incorporated as Queens TW. Is that correct? Is that the name of the corporation? El nombre de tu corporación es Queens. Sí. 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 Yes. But you're doing business as Cafe 593 Corp. Yes. Pero tú estás haciendo negocio como Cafe. Cafe, no, es Cafe 593 Corporation. Yes, C Cafe 593. 593 593 Corporation. Okay, and have you submitted a uh, doing business as form saying that you're doing business as Cafe 593 Corporation? Have you done that? Tú has hecho eh, oficialmente que es Café 593 Incorporación. La verdad es que ese dato lo lleva mi, mi, la abogada y ya no pudo estar aquí. That information have my lawyer and my lawyer can uh, be no here today. Okay. <coughs> I'm not talking. The attorney's not here today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the rep is a night on me. Do you have any connection at all to the previous applicant for this location? Sorry? Does she have any connection whatsoever to the previous application? Do you have any connection with the application recent that was hizo? No, so I did my application in March of 2023. March of 2023? 
Bueno, tengo uh, la temporaria cada mes, desde marzo de 2022. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had one from 2023. Uh -huh. Marzo. Sí. Oh, March 2023. Before that, uh, I don't, I don't know nothing about it. Okay. All right. Um, and she's been operating on a temp without incident right. since. I'm okay with it. Yeah. She's gonna have to submit a DBA because it says we don't. Have to. Okay, that's fine. Um. I'm going to vote to approve with the conditions from the community board 9 to 11, oh, 11 p.m. closed background uh, recorded music only. Commissioner? Uh, I'm also going to vote to approve conditioned upon your submitting a DBA form, doing business as form, because the information I have is that there's no such form on file. Okay. Chair, you're okay with that? Uh, yes, DBA is fine. Thank you. Okay. I can still work it. What was that? If I can still work it. Bueno, okay. Okay. Yeah, she was, in her business. She's, she's approved, but she has to get us the DBA form. Yeah, to, to, okay. Yes, you'll get a you'll get a letter in the an email. Okay. Y por favor, um, puede renovar también su uh, temporario. Usted tiene un permiso temporario, sí, correcto? Sí, permiso temporario. Porque le van a mandar una carta uh -huh. que le aprobaron la aplicación. Entonces. Tiene el derecho a renovar la temporaria. Okay. Okay. Gracias. Con mucho gusto. Buenas suerte. Gracias. Buen día. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have a couple more. I'm sorry. Uh, so next is 58 El Posto, no, Trattoria, no, Rustica Corp. No, you're fine. I don't care. It's good. Okay. Um, Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, Good morning. 58. Uh, good morning, members of the board. Um, I'm Argelio Rodriguez of Rodriguez Law, and I'm here as the attorney um, for the applicant, uh, Il Posto Trattoria Rustica Corp DBA Cafe Tabu. Um, and I'm here with, uh, with the 50% principal, uh, John C. Espinal. Um, and this is a change of class application um, from restaurant beer wine to full liquor. Uh, it, they we appeared at the community board, community board 12 in December, 2022, and they voted to support the application on, with a vote of 27 to four. The licensee has been operating with their temporary permit um, as an OP liquor since March, 2023, which is now over about 13 months with no problems, no summonses, no disciplinary issues. Um, the principal John C. Espinal has pur purchased the 50% interest sometime around March he was approved March 2021, um, and so we're here to answer any questions. So he was one of the principals that was denied in um, March of 22, right? That's right. And so, um, as we explained in the, in the letter, um, the first the, his his attempt at this previously uh, was disapproved uh, due to a sale of of liquor. Um, and uh, he paid a $5,000 civil penalty. Okay. And he apologizes for that, and that employee has been suspended. Okay, I'm cool. No problem. So is he aware that when he's operating on an OP temp that there are hours restrictions? Yes, he's aware. All right. So I'm going to vote to deny again. which unfortunately automatically resends his temp. 
but I don't believe that he's been living by the boundaries of his temporary license. Commissioner? I concur with the chair and also vote to deny. Um, is, is there any evidence as, as to that or is there any other additional information you can provide for purposes of a reconsideration? Uh, you can always I make mean, a request we do our work. for foil as well. Yeah, you can foil it. If, I don't think it's public though. And leave it up to the foil team. Yeah. You can foil any records we have. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, next, also need an interpreter, is number 31, Bueno 111 Grocery Court. Thirty one Bueno one eleven grocery grocery corp. What number? Thirty one. I'll pay that down. Buenos dias. Good morning. It's, uh, no contest after this. Oh. Number twenty eight. We're trying to get through yep. the yep. Okay. interpreters. Very good, thank you. Uh good morning, commissioners. Gene Anton, uh pairing for the applicant. Um I believe you have some questions. Are you a sole applicant? Yes, he is. Okay. Is he on site? Is he on site? You mean does he work there? Yes. Okay. Does he know the people who own it prior to this? No, he does not. Okay. He, All he right. found out through a, if you need to know, he found out through a, a realty company through his uh, golfer. Okay. All right. I know right now there are no gambling machines. Don't have gambling machines. So I'm going to vote to approve. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. There's a history of gambling there, so people may look to gamble there in the future. Uh, obviously, don't have gambling machines. I will also vote to approve. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next that needs an interpreter is number three, Little Mexican Restaurant Inc. Third. Um, number three. Number middle. three. Three. Number three. Number three. Again. Hi. So you guys have been running this restaurant since 20 years ago, 24 years ago? 34 years. Impressive. And why do you want to be stay open, open until 2 a.m.? Because many people starting coming to the business around that time, and what I know is other business open to up to that time. So why we cannot do it? Yeah. Okay. Can you put their names? Can you ask their names? Okay. So you're the one who runs the restaurant? Yeah. I run the restaurant. So why don't you get on the license? Uh, for that, it's, uh, you need to make a season and uh, win a season. Okay. 
Por, I don't know, I don't fully understand what you're saying. ¿Por qué tú, ok, si tú eres quien está a cargo del negocio, entonces por qué tú no tienes la licencia? Porque yo no soy ciudadano. Y, Because I'm not citizen. Ah, ok. I understand. All right, I'm going to approve 2 a.m. Está bien, lo voy a aprobar hasta las 2 de la mañana. And uh, Commissioner. Um, are you listed as the manager of the restaurant? Yeah. Okay. Sure. And sure. does mom have any role with the business whatsoever? Yes, she worked there some hours. About how many hours? Cinco diarias. Around five every day. Okay. All right. She, she lives in the building. She's the owner. Okay. I'm also going to vote to approve with the, uh, with the 2 a.m. With the 2 a.m. Okay. Been approved. All right. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. He's back. All right. So now I'm going to recall 61A, Restaurant Sabor Latino Bar Evita Inc. Okay. They should be coming up. Can I, can I tell the translator um, something to tell uh, Mr. Bar? Sure. Um, I, it's, I, my feeling after reading the letter is, is to just address the, the hours of the premise. Uh, and give them a chance to be a restaurant. So just, I told them that I wanted you to tell them also. Okay. Hey, I want to make sure you say that you're reading the letter because they can have agreement or they can get it so now. Hours. Different hours. Okay. Then you see that you do you need a discussion, Mr. Duluco? Because no, you can wanted, take more time. No, I wanted the translator to tell uh, her, uh, tell him what I what I said. I don't think he got it. Okay. So I'm not asking you if you need more no, time to have a conversation. I'm good. I didn't want to take. Okay, because our records show that we have sent you the letter that the police sent. I, and I, I understand that. that, but you need to look at your records because there is a room full of people here in in Albany. I'm sorry. And so we really do expect you to be prepared for your clients and not take everybody's time. So do you have any response about yeah, this? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, I, I, I know I would have responded because I feel it's, a, it's, an, it's anti Latino. Um, but the previous guy um, that was here. This place hasn't had a license since 2021, and we did FOIL and receive the information about the, the previous app licensees that were there. And the issue seemed to be more him uh, than, uh, than uh, a disorderly premise. He operated contrary to his application parameters, and he also, prior to that, he operated illegally under his wife's name, and those were the issues that, that went against him. Um, and both of his applications were disapproved prior to this. Um, uh, Mr. Velasquez uh, just wa wants to be a restaurant. So we would have no problem with early, early closings. He's not looking for alcohol. He's looking for wine and beer. He's already been operating since July as a restaurant without any alcohol. Um, and this is for this, ap this appearance is for a temp. So if we were wrong, he, you could easily just, in other words, this is almost like a probationary period. Okay. And, mm. So he's applied for recorded music, DJ music, karaoke, live music, patron dancing, and no security guard. The no security guard um, was because he wants to be a restaurant. Um, okay. So then if you want to be a restaurant, take all you also out. don't need 
DJ, karaoke, live music, and patron dancing, because that's to okay. the Spring Valley Police does not suggest a restaurant. It suggests a formula that got the prior licensee into a lot of trouble, right? Do you want so, him to have security anyway? No, I don't want him to have security. I don't need him to have security. The board no longer requires or make demands of people on security guards. So I'm not going to put that responsibility on him because that's a, a, you know, a cost that he's going to have to bear. If he's just a restaurant, he shouldn't need a security guard. Correct. So given that he's had a clean record since he's had the temp. No, so he didn't get the temp, ma'am. Temp. I don't want to mislead you. He no, doesn't ma have a temp? No, ma'am. This is for the temp. This is for the temp. He's been operating. Oh, this is for the temp. He's been, he's been operating, operating with no alcohol. Oh, since, I see. Since he's been July. operating without yes, since. This is for the temp. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. No, so no. he's been operating without problems. Eight months. Since July. So despite what the Spring Valley Police is saying, you know, I would like to, with the commissioner's support, give him the opportunity to run a restaurant with a wine license. Mm -hmm. But would you ask him if he would agree to giving up DJ karaoke, live music, patron dancing? Yes. Yes. Okay. The hours that I will be comfortable with for now would be 11 o'clock during the week, Thursday to Sunday midnight. Okay. That seems more than fair. That's Monday to Wednesday at 11, Thursday to Sunday at midnight. So why don't we start there? And if he has a clean record, no problems with the police, you can come back for the 2 a.m. How's that? Thank you. And I think uh, Spring Valley, from what I understand, is getting better. It is getting better. Yeah. I, I, okay. I want him to understand he's, he's done, you know, once you bring alcohol into the premises, it changes the, the dynamics mm -hmm. a little. That We have a strong letter from the police. Mm -hmm. That area, they're telling us, has received special state funding. It's That's designated. I saw that. It gives I didn't see this before. To, I'm so sorry. Address, I don't know why to address the uh, the crime problem there. Mm -hmm. So he should be, remain as vil vigilant as possible, mm -hmm. but we certainly want him to succeed. I, I will I, also vote yeah. to approve yeah. with the conditions specified by the chair. Okay. Thank you. And that's for the temp, and then yeah. with the license application to come back to see- I'll record. modify it. You wouldn't want to do that, or how do you want to do that? Or uh, do this you want the main to come back for the yes. license? Oh, amend the application. What main license? This, this is a temp. Oh, this is a temp. Oh, no, I don't need the main to come back. So, okay. I mean, the, but it would have to be the same conditions. It's the same conditions. So, and then at some point down the road, he can do a, a change in method of operation application if he wants later. If he hours. wants to add it later. Yeah, if he wants a change, a that's, a, yeah. that's mm -hmm. down the road. So, I'm, I'll I'm amend okay the current with the application to reflect what you said. So the so we start with the temp as is. The main is going to go to licensing board. It's going to stay as is with these conditions. Can and you do that? Future, I'll amend. I'll, I'll amend the. I'll amend the, the application yeah, to remove operation. all okay. of that. I'll renotify the, the. Just for for the record, I'll renotify uh, Spring Valley. And yeah, and if you can, you know, try to talk to the chief. You know, try to go and say, look. We got the temp. We're going to start operating. But if you have any problems, call us. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Chair, do you have a specific time from the approval of the main license until they can come back? A year. One year? Yeah. Okay. So one year after the main gets. Oh, we should reapply. Then you could do the method of operation. Let's get this. Let's do this one first. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, you're going to yeah. get the temp as is. If the main gets approved, mm -hmm. it's going to stay with these conditions. Okay. After a year, then you could come we'll back reapply. with a method of operation. Okay, thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you. Is that okay? okay? That's fine. You don't need to see the. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah, just make sure the conditions stick, though. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Miss Garcia. You can. Uh, thank, you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck. Thank you. All right. So now we can go back to Albany. <laughs> First is 33 Eastwood Liquor Corp. 
Yeah, good, good afternoon, I guess it is almost. Uh, my name is Dirk Outamall. I'm here uh, with the principal of the LLC, Ria Hans. And uh, we're here to uh, address an issue, apparently, of other, uh, one other uh, licensee who believes that uh, we're going to impair their business. I took the liberty to give you an actual street map of the area of Syracuse. Is the protest there, sir? Chair, there is protest here. Okay, we review your application, so would you let them go first and put on the, their information on the record and then you can respond? Yes. All right, thank you. Hi, Ms. Becker. Good morning. How are uh, you? Alexandra Becker of, I'm great, how are you? I'm good. Um, Alexandra Becker of Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah. I have here with me Viral Patel, who is the principal of Syracuse Liquor, Inc. Um, a couple of issues with this application, as we outlined um, in our letter from last week, there appears to be a discrepancy between the distances that the applicant provided in their application and the distances that are calculated by the SLA's LAMP, um, in that if you, look at, if you look at the LAMP system, um, my client is actually the second closest, not the third closest store, and significantly closer at 1.19 miles rather than the 1.4 or 1.5. Um, that they had indicated. So if you look, actually, we have five stores within a mile and a half here, which um, is just incredibly oversaturated. If you want to go, you know, beyond that, we've got uh, Liquor World is another massive store, 8,000 square feet. That's within two miles. And if you want to expand that another mile further, you've got a Wegmans Liquor City. Um, this is a basically a suburban area. This is not an urban area where you've got neighborhoods and people are going to stay within their neighborhood. Um, so the fact that we have about 28,000 retail square footage of space within this very specific and small area um, is significant. This is not an area that's growing. The population of Onondaga County in general has been declining. Um, we apparently were the only store that put in sales figures as the other three stores that were contacted did not put anything in. Um, you know, our client, my client's store saw the same COVID bump that everyone else saw. Beyond that, it's been consistent, even though, you know, we applied and were approved about a year ago for a bigger space that has not resulted um, in increased sales. You know, what we're seeing across the board industry-wide is increased costs, um, the requirement to carry more products, which is obviously cutting down on profit, combined with, you know, the issue that a lot of people, um, particularly in the younger generation, are more sober curious and are requesting a lot of non-alcoholic beverage products, which... Um, these stores are not able to carry. Um, we have some concerns that, you know, we outlined about the ownership of the store. We'll certainly leave that for the authority to address if you see fit. But our predominant issue is just that this area is just wildly oversaturated and the existence of another 5,500 square foot store just absolutely does not serve the public convenience and advantage. All right. Thank you. But your numbers are showing relative growth. Is that accurate? I, I would say we had obviously growth, you know, from 19 to 20 during COVID. I would say there's been some minor growth, um, but certainly yeah, nothing good. that's, yes, there was obviously the expansion that was granted and about a year ago. More, and go ahead. put the more inventory into the store. So, correct. So I'm I would sorry, say there's been minor say? growth. That because okay. of the increase in the store, he's been carrying more inventory, and that obviously cuts down on profit. And just also with the abundance and continuing abundance of new products, that stores are you know increasingly carrying more and more products, which cuts down on their profits. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What strikes me as curious is how Syracuse Liquor and NCP Liquor being so close to each other end up being uh, within the uh, area of my client's proposed store. I gave you a copy of the Syracuse street map, and this is a, an old area of Syracuse, and you can see south of the proposed location and to the west of a very uh, number of solid residential area with probably 
uh, I don't know how many because there's no data available, but I would guess many, many homes. Um, and, and what's compelling, I think, for this uh, board to consider is that there is substantial physical barriers or impediments from the objector's property to the site of my client. In between is the old Erie Canal filled in, which now contains a New York State Highway, New okay. York State 5, which is six lanes wide, and also an interstate. And there's very little opportunity to cross over from the uh, major arterial that uh, the objector is located on. So uh, we believe that um, that there will the public convenience will be served for those people immediately. If you're knowledgeable at all with Syracuse, uh, the Eastwood is a small clustered uh, commercial area of approximately six or eight blocks long. And there's movie theaters and small stores, and uh, my client proposes to locate in a small shopping center, which is a part of that strip. But, but the essence of Eastwood is that it's pretty much a community and people that live there trade in the immediate area and actually they walk. There's a lot of walking that occurs uh, and uh, because of that we I'm sorry, that judging from the, from the pictures you sent me, it doesn't look like anyone is walking to this location. Well, okay, I, I, I disagree with, with, with that opinion, sir, because there's a, a well-established sidewalk in the area. I'm talking about the area to the south of my client's proposal. And there's one main street, James Street. Once you cross James Street, which is a two-lane city street, it's, a, it's an old neighborhood uh, and uh, with all located with sidewalks. So it's, it's a well-established old neighborhood. And uh, we believe that there is, in this commercial strip, there is no other um, licensee, and this would serve the convenience of the neighbors well. So can you talk about the finish and character of your client? Um, her experience and the investments involved here? She uh, has her own funds, as the application would uh, disclose. Her husband has a licensee about seven miles away by car. It's uh, on a good day, maybe 20 minute drive, on a bad day, a half an hour drive. And she learned the business through uh, working in her husband's store and also working at another place. Uh, that uh, retailed uh, products, including beer and wine. Uh, so she has experience. She is not a Native American, uh, but uh, she has worked and is a proud woman and wants to have her own business and wants to be an active person in uh, supporting her family. Can you talk about the investments? I, I see a $20,000 here. I don't know what that would do. Does that buy inventory or renovate the space? I mean, it looks pretty that, bare to me. That, that amount was uh, computed based upon the needs to prepare the space and open the door. The inventory, she has additional funds uh, of approximately 50 or more thousand dollars that she can uh, access through her own banking uh, to build her inventory. She may need a few more dollars, but um, she, um, if she were to borrow, she would borrow from her husband. And uh, we didn't disclose that because as of this point, we're not even sure we can hang on to this location. As you can appreciate, this is a commercial opening in a, a commercial center, and the landlord is just driving us crazy where we may well lose the space before we can complete our process with you. So uh, if you wish more information to support her financial ability to uh, pursue this matter, we'll be pleased to provide it. Uh, at this point, she has sufficient cash resources 
to get the store ready and get the door open and to start with a small inventory. The space is larger than, than she wanted, but she had no other choice in terms of availability of location. So the space may be a little oversized for the amount of display of well, product that they can she buy and will carry. They lose them. I mean, as I, as I look at the map too, it is kind of spread out. Yeah. So you mentioned that the spouse is going to give the loan to her. Can you just clarify that? Well, her, her uh, husband uh, is a licensee with a liquor store about seven miles away. And he is a successful businessman and has sufficient resources that he can loan to his wife. And um, I've, I've represented these people for some time, so I, I'm, I'm personally familiar with how they do business. And she has no need to go to outside sources for funding. And uh, But until we know exactly what the store build out is and, and how far her 50 to some odd thousand dollars cash will go, uh, we're hard pressed to give you more information, but uh, we most right. certainly can give you that. Okay. Um, uh, Chair, could I make a quick rebuttal? I think I can vote. Um, so. I mean, I'm, I'm just taking your own words as I, I don't think there is enough separation between the existing store and, and this new business, so I'm going to vote to deny. Commissioner. All right. Um, out of the uh, one, two, three, out of the five uh, stores that were supposed to respond, none of them responded with the exception of Syracuse. Syracuse does show an increase, and it's uh, about $600,000 from what I can see over 2019 to 2023. Looking at the map, I also see that things are very spread out as council represented. Uh, I, I, there is a concern here with, you know, the husband and the money and is this, is this really just another score for him? Um, but I would vote to approve. So we have a split and the application. Yep. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Next the split, both the application is denied. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Next item in Albany is 61C, 224 All Star Pizza and Deli, Inc. Good morning, members of the board. My name is Philip Miller. I'm an attorney here in Albany, New York. I'm a resident 224 All Star Pizza. This is Nasser Nasher. He's the principal of the corporation and the owner and, manager and the operator of the store in question. I did submit on March 27th uh, both a letter from myself, notes of parents. A, an affidavit for, for Mr. Nasser and two certificates of completion of an alcohol awareness training program that was administered and taken here in Albany, New York. There was a problem with the website or the uh, the, the uh, address site, so but I did submit it to Syracuse after some telephone conversations back and forth, and I guess it was then submitted to, to the board. Later that day, I received a request to resubmit, which I did. Hopefully the board members have received this. It was dated March 27th on my stationery. I said it, it includes a notice of appearance, an, aff an affidavit of Mr. Nasher, and two certificates of completion. Mr. Nasher is going to be the only, uh, well, there's one other employee in the store, Mr. Nasher, and this other employee will operate the store, manage the store. Both of them have taken the training program. Uh, there was a, a, uh, an unfortunate incident in the past with a temporary uh, permit, Your Honors. Uh, and, and he apologizes for that. That 
we don't really know which employee was involved or two different employees and neither one was willing to admit that they're the one that sold but neither of those employees are going to be employed in the uh, in the store as it's reopened now as the owner of the business he doesn't know who made the sale to minor who's under 18. he does not know your honor both employees so they didn't do it obviously that isn't right but we don't know he's he's not a, not a detective <laughs> I'm sorry to say, there's no way for him to determine which one did it. He believes did he, he knows. Fire, did he fire both of them? He did. Yes, sure he did. He thinks he knows which one did it, but he's not absolutely positive. But in any event, uh, the, those employees are not issues because they're not involved in the store in any capacity whatsoever now. And will so not be does in the future. he know the prior people who ran the business with the same name? Um. I believe he knew them, yes, sir. He had no connection with them whatsoever, though. No business how does relationship he, with How them. does he know them? I believe just uh, I, it's a, through a family member, I believe. What does that mean? Can you clarify? Can you have him answer? How did you, who's you know, who's the person who used to own the business? I'll let Mr. Nasser tell you. I don't even know them. Pardon me? The old owners, is Yes. It? I don't know them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm incorrect. Apparently, he did not own them. No, them at all. And how? Why is he operating the business on, with the same name? Because it was a sandwich name. This is a college community, or it was at the time before St. Rose closes, uh, and he wanted to operate the same uh, with using the same name. It was an established uh, pizza store in the area. And he's operating the. He's operating now? He's operating the the deli now? He is, yes. Uh, he does, no alcohol is involved. No, no beer, no wine products. But he's operating the store now, yes. It's functioning. It's a certificate of occupancy. He has all the licenses necessary. He's operating it as a pizza store only. Well, pizza store and deli. So was it a family member who owned it before or not? No, it was not. No, I, I, was, I was wrong in that. I'm sorry. Are there any protocols, um, I mean, cameras at the store, uh, ID scanners? How is it that he can't identify which employee actually uh, made the sale? I'm sorry, uh, would you repeat that, please? Any cameras in the store, any ID scanners? What protocols in place to prevent sales to minors? Well, as I said, I'm taking the training course. Uh, they understand that they've got to ask for a picture identification. Are there cameras in the store? Yes. There are cameras in the store, yes. But that's not going to stop a sale. It's the protocol as far as asking for proof and making certain that the person that, that wants to buy the product is, is actually over the age of 21 and there's documentation of that effect. Picture ID and other, and, and, and other forms of ID as well. Certainly picture ID is a protocol. But if the camera was there when the sale was made, couldn't he identify the uh, employee that way? Oh, I don't know. I do. You know, you know who did it? No, but it's, the thing is, you know, as a college town, there's a lot of people be in the store, so you don't know who was it. Uh, Mr. Nash, you're saying this. I don't know if you could hear what you're saying. That it's in the college area. There were a lot of people in the store at the time. Uh, the fact that there's cameras in the store doesn't mean that the camera focuses on, on any particular area of the store. It could have been off to just right. outside of the camera focus. Given that there was a revocation here and multiple sale to minor in the history, I don't feel like this applicant is ready to have proper oversight. I'm going to vote to deny. I concur with the chair and will also vote to deny. Put the license application to come back, correct, or is that a straight? Because this is a temporary. So I'm going to vote to deny. Okay. Thank you. No, there is no. This is denied. So you deny both the temp and yes. Okay. Are you okay with that? What? This is a temp application, so we're denying both. Yeah, I'm fine. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the temporary this is the temporary permit application. It's being dot denied, which will likely lead to the denial of the main license application as well. Okay. Thank you.
Alright, uh, next in Albany is 35 for Lawful Genius Inc. Good morning to 35. the board. Mayor. Sorry, yeah, 35. <clears throat> Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Mayor for Corey for Falafel Genius Inc. Uh, doing me business as Hudson Valley Falafel. Uh, to my right is the owner president, uh, Mohamed Khalil. Um, he used to have a grocery store? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And how far is that from here? Is that in the same town? No. Where was that? About 15 miles uh, south. You and I no longer own that store anymore. Okay. How big is this space? How many square foot is this store? The restaurant? Um, I believe it's in the paperwork that we drew earlier, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't have the data with me today. Um, I have it roughly. Are you operating it right now? Yes. We have a temporary license that we've been renewing for the last few months, hoping to get our permanent one. He, but he's currently uh, on premise and he's running the business. But he doesn't know how big it is. It roughly I mean, I feet. can guess. I don't know the exact numbers, but I would say 2,000 square feet. It, it's okay. got a maximum capacity of 60. Uh, it's got about uh, 13 uh, chairs by the bar. Um, number about 12 tables total. It's a, it's a small, it's, a, it's in a little strip plaza. Okay. This is not a chain though, right? Hudson no. Valley Falafel. No. Are you planning to serve hookah? No. Okay. There's no music, no dancing? No. Okay. Are you willing to implement some kind of ID checking system through your employees or using a scanner? Sure, yes. He's okay. had the temporary uh, for a little while now, and there's absolutely no no issues, no complaints, uh, no violations during the temporary period, which has been almost yes. a year since he's had it. Okay, that's fine. That's the same information I have. Um, and it's only because you have a prior record of sale to minor at your other AX license is unfortunate, but I'm going to... Um, ask you to implement an, uh, an, uh, an employee ID check system. Other than that, I'm going to vote to approve. Uh, I see that the city uh, was notified on uh, February 29th and they gave you a 30 day waiver on the same day. Do you actually have an approval from the city? The only thing we had was the, the, the waiver that was signed off on. We didn't get anything else from them. All right. All right, I'm going to infer that they're willing uh, to go along with this and concur with the chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Paula, Thank there's you. nothing else in Albany, correct? Correct. Um. All right, you can uh, sign off. Thank you. Bye, Paula. Bye. Bye, Paula. All right, so New York City. The first item is 17102 North Franklin Corp. Good afternoon. My name is Lawrence Carr. I am the attorney representing the corporation presently before you. Next to me is Asela Amaya. She is the owner since 2017. This is a conditional no contest. It stems from an incident that occurred within the bar on or about June 18, 2023. Security was present. There were video cameras present as well. Unfortunately, the fight was broken up rather quickly and the parties were dispersed outside. Later on, it came to the attention of the police that there had been a stabbing at some point during the course of the disturbance. Whether it cut inside or outside, the video did not lend credence to either way. However, it is admitted that we failed to notify the police or follow through with a call predicated upon dispersing the patrons. Thereafter, the complainant did appear at the police station, was wholly uncooperative, refused to give any details, refused to identify who the alleged perpetrators was, but did maintain that the incident occurred within the premises. As a result of same conversation held with the prosecutor, we had requested that the board consider 
imposing a fine of $2,500. This is the first time any incident like this has occurred. We do maintain extensive security and we're fully aware of the necessity to contact the police when and if an altercation arises. A little concern here that the it's the manager who allegedly failed to call the police, but the method of operation and personal questionnaire submitted uh, with the original application says that there will not be a manager and that the principal will manage full time. Priscilla Amaya is generally present there throughout the evening. She was not that there at that specific time. She is the sole proprietor and owner, does not really have any other employment that necessitates her away from the bar. This was about 2.30. Uh, actually, it's closing time. We closed a little earlier. At, at that time, we stopped serving. The place remains open. And we were unaware that the incident actually occurred until several days later when the police came in and informed us that the gentleman involved in the disturbance had actually a puncture wound to him. We were wholly unaware of that. And in viewing the video, which was destroyed and could not be reviewed uh, because of the time lapse, we couldn't tell if it happened or not within the premises, but um, we did fail to notify. With regard to the manager, the manager is present there. He works there as well uh, and does work several hours. How many managers do you have? Only one. Only one. Okay. So you should put him or her name and and fill out a personal questionnaire and amend your um, records with our agency with the manager's information. Um, is the manager still working there? Sure. Yes. Same one. Same one. So your security camera only keeps data for how long? Um. You know. <laughs> What had happened was we were unaware of the incident. The board yeah, but you told me that you found out after a few days, but you're telling me that the, the, video, the was, video is not available. Well, the video was run by the, for the police to view. But what happened is we were unaware that the SLA took action in this matter. And I had returned to the board possibly about four or five months ago because there was a cancellation of the license. And it was demonstrated that we never got any certified mailings or any notice. Of, of the problem. So at that point in time, the video obviously was extinguished because it was four and a half months later. Well, so you animal? provided it to, yeah, you provided it to the police at that, that, uh, the following night. And you didn't keep a record of it for yourself? No, because we didn't know that any action was going to be taken at the time. We didn't know. I know, but when an incident happens, it didn't occur to you that a stabbing had happened and you're not going to keep a record of it? Uh, I'm just saying. Well, Council you have a you have a summary suspension on your record. The police take a copy. I well. Did they view? They it they viewed it at the premises, and then, I guess they had to go find the individual. Then the individual was complete. The, the victim was completely uncooperative, and then the matter closed. But apparently, the SLA then attempted to notify the establishment that there was an issue. But we never got notice that the SLA was moving on it and the certified mails were never given. And we then we came before the board and demonstrated that we didn't know it had occurred. So the license was restored and they said, listen, now you're going to have a hearing on the event itself. Did the police take a copy is my question of the I do not believe the police took a copy. I believe the sergeant came in and viewed the video according to his deposition, but he didn't secure a copy of the video. And we were unaware that it became a significant incident at that time. This is, this is not a digital system. This is an analog system. I believe it rolls over itself every 30 days, sir. Wow. And we were four months behind. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, we have a uh, failure to con comply on licensed security guards back in June of 2019, failure to comply again in July uh, 30th, 2020. Uh, disorderly premises, uh, October 3rd, 2020, October 11, 2020, disorderly premises, October 25th, 2020, mm -hmm. uh, failure to comply, October 26, 2020, failure to supervise, November 7th, 2020. There's a lot of history here, and, and that raises a lot of concerns. I don't, I don't think 2,500 is enough here at all. No, I'm going to. What do you think? 
All right, uh, we are in equilibrium over here. We're going to counter at 5,000. You can accept or um, take the item to hearing. I could accept. Accept. I'm sorry. We will accept the fine and also. You accept here at the meeting? Okay. Yeah. And for clarity's sake, uh, Your Honor, we will then be filling out the questionnaire with regard to the manager and filing that with the SLA within the next two weeks. Is that Yes, that's manageable? fine. And make sure him and her knows that they are supposed to call the police when something happens. Um, I concur with $5,000. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Next is 14 Milo 34 Corp. This one, we were, my office was informed by the prosecutor that there is another case that should have been added to this. 14? 14. With like, and if. 14. Sorry. Oh, you want to take this yeah, back? There's a second case that needs to be okay. added. So back to counsel's office. Thank you. Is that them? Yeah, that's it. Right there. Oh, you okay, yeah. On the Do you want to settle time? one now or no? No, do them both at the agenda. No, thanks for coming, but yeah, let's oh. do it all together. All right, thanks Thank a lot. You. Are you okay, Commissioner? Yes. Next is 32 Langford Wine Merchants Inc. Good morning, member. Yeah. Morning, afternoon, members. Uh, Max Bookman and Phil Dorn, Pizetsky and Bookman PC, counsel for the applicant. To my left is Young Kim. She is the owner of uh, a liquor store that is the applicant before you that is seeking a removal. Uh, the, the reason for this removal is because um, she's essentially been priced out by her landlord. She's had a liquor store at this location for 10 years, started in 2015. I guess coming up on 10 years, started in 2015. It was a 10 year lease. Lease is set to expire in 2025. As that is on the horizon, negotiations with the landlord emerged as to what a new lease would look like. And to her disappointment, the landlord is seeking rent that is significantly more expensive than what the current lease uh, permits. And what it, is the difference? Right now, her lease is at, uh, it started um, at 28,000. It escalated to 35,000. So that's what she's currently paying. So she's at the height of, 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 the, of the rent right now on the escalation, 35. The landlord is, um, for the next year, is basically starting at 35,000 and then 36, pardon me, 36 and a half, and then is looking to increase that further up for the next 10 year period, up to 40 to potentially even $50,000. It's just too much. It's not, you know, she can't survive with that. So she, so this is an application of necessity. They looked for a location. She found one that best suits her needs. That is as close as possible to, as you know, given the, 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 the dynamics of what's available to her store. Um, it's she's staying on Fifth Avenue. It's a seven block move. It's in the Bryant Park area, um, same area of Midtown. She's going from 43rd Street down to 36th Street, um, but staying on Fifth Avenue. It's noteworthy that um, of the four closest stores, um, none of them are on Fifth Avenue. So she's maintaining her her Fifth Avenue location. Um, she's also reducing size which again is not something she wanted, but she's doing. Um, she's going down I to- I just want to clarify, you're not currently on Fifth Avenue. Pardon me, Chair. She's on 43rd Street, but that's the address, but it's like, you know, a step or two away from, from Fifth Avenue. Um, so you're, you're right, the address is 43rd Street, but she's, you know, you know she considers herself, you know, on Fifth Avenue. Um, the others, none of the other stores that, you know, are in the vicinity of the new store are, 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 are anywhere close to Fifth Avenue, not, not even steps away. They're on Madison, mostly. And there's one even further. So not only is she reducing size, but you know, just from objective standards, it's going to be a tiny store, 700 square feet of retail. So that, that is a small store. Um, I think it's important to note that of the four closest stores that were identified by us and the authority at the time we filed, um, one of those stores has since gone out of business. What, what your licensing bureau has told you is that they didn't renew their license. We went and looked at that store. The store is, is out of business. Um, so there's already one fewer store, and so by us moving, you know, since it's a removal, we're not adding a new store anyway. And in fact, you know, there's there's one fewer store. So we think that's that's important that to park, mention. Park store, one sixty one Madison Avenue. 
um, which I'll give you the corporate name in a second, uh, Commissioner. It is, um, it's called 161 Madison Avenue Liquors, Inc. Um, okay. That one went out. Uh, also just important to note, um, so we've knocked out one store because they've closed. Those, of the remaining three, um, one of them didn't give you any gross sales, which is often evidence in this agency that they didn't see, that, that they didn't have an objection. Um, there was one objector, but as is common with removal applications, it's at least our uh, speculation that this individual who objected didn't realize that this is a removal. And I mean, if you look at the language in their um, opposition letter, they, they're talking about it as a new store, but it's not a new store. And so, um, you know, we, we don't think that's really relevant. So for those reasons, we, we ask you to allow my, my client to remain in business uh, at a rent that, 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 that satisfactory for her business and approve this removal. Your lease ends in 2025, right? Correct, January of 25. So we have less than a year left at this point. All right, I, I am sympathetic towards the situation. However, all the surrounding stores are doing significantly down numbers. I do realize that business in this Midtown area is very difficult. Can I address but that? I am not seeing public convenience and advantage of moving the store further into a zone that is very, very saturated already. So I'm going to vote to deny. Commissioner De Leon. The, the figures do indicate uh, that uh, the sales are down, but this is Midtown and the, what's happening with the way, the, the way people have changed their work style, uh, it's affecting businesses in that area. Uh, I do recognize that you're downsizing. I do recognize that this is being done by uh, necessity. Uh, I do recognize that we didn't get a response from one store and the other store uh, is out of business now. Another one is out of business. So for all those reasons, I would vote to approve, but we have a split vote. And okay, thank you, you, members. Next is 61B, Atrium Hall, LLC. Good afternoon, uh, Martin Miller, Bill and Buscemi. Uh, these are the two um, applicants or the principals of the applicant. Just introduce them, put your name. Shlomi Itzkowitz. Sammy Obra. This is... Um, this is being here. This is uh, being considered here because there's uh, an application for a temporary license. Uh, this is a glatt kosher catering hall that's been in business for about 30 years without any incident. Uh, these gentlemen are just going to continue on with a glatt kosher shoma shabbos um, uh, catering hall that um, that uh, caters to the orthodox. This is in Muncie, New York. I believe this thing is here because it's within the village of Spring Valley. But other than that, I don't understand why there's uh, a question about wh whether a uh, temporary should be issued here. What are the hours? Well, the hours will vary depending on, on the affair. Uh, it, there's, no, there's no set hours. It's a catering, but, uh, it's a catering hall. It's not. I'm open. asking you what's the intended hours. Do you have? Do you know what hours generally the, um, the parties run to? These are, these are weddings, bar mitzvahs. That's what I know. Generally, how long does Gen it go? Generally, 6 to 12. 6 to 12. OK. But that's not to say that there might and not be the for, occasional. Forgive me for asking, but are women allowed into this establishment? Yes, there's a, there's a machine. This, if you understand this, this system, the, it allows 400 people. but. The Orthodox prefer that the women are on one side and the men are on another, and there's a mishkiach between them. But yes, they're, they're, they're all there. The women dance with the women, the men dance with the men. That's okay. All right. Um, DJ recorded music, live music, patron dancing. Yes. Uh, Spring Valley Police Department is okay. I'm okay. Um, I'm going to vote to approve. Thank you. I also vote to approve. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Next is 41, Herbaco, Herbaco Wine Merchant, LLC. Well, 
Bolivia. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a good story. I'm sorry, guy. Everybody, I think it's a. I just need to take one moment. All right. Sorry. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna take a brief recess. We'll be back on the record shortly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I uh, had my blood test recently. Stretch the legs. Ah.
Uh, we're back on the record after a brief recess. Uh, again, the current item is 41, Probaco Wine Merchant, LLC. No, it's okay. Um, are you that applicant? Yes. Right, if you could come up and put your name on the record, please. Good afternoon to the board. My name is Antonino Dayudo. I'm an attorney representing the applicant. I'm here with the two principals, uh, Jade and Rosella. Uh, we have some opposition here, so I guess as standard practice, uh, they can present their case first. Good afternoon, I'm Charles Lynn. Uh, I represent the uh, Gary's Wine and Liquor Inc. Uh, who is protesting this application. With me today is Leonid and my Maya uh, Stoff maker. They are the two principals of uh, Gary's Wine and Liquor. Uh, also here though is uh, another licensee, JF1688. He's the fifth closest store I am not representing him, but I just want uh, you to know that his name is Steve Hung, and he, he is also here for this uh, presentation. As far as uh, proximity and saturation, the, there are 14 liquor stores within 0.5 miles of the applicant. My client's store, Gary's Wine and Liquors, is the closest store, and it's just 633 feet from applicant. Uh, in my supplement, I added the uh, lamp um, stores, uh, which are only eight. Uh, I had a surveyor uh, take a survey. It's part of my exhibit A uh, to my supplement, and it shows uh, the distances, the actual distances between the entire 14 stores uh, beyond just the eight that the lamp had. And again, uh, there are 14 within 0.5 miles and my client is only 633 feet uh, from the applicant. As far as gross sales are concerned, all four of the repeating, reporting stores had decreases in sales. If you take away the 2010, um, 2020, 2021 COVID uh, jump that they had. So if you look at the 2022 from 2019, they all show decreases. Uh, the second largest store, Fort Green Wines, is down almost 40%. Uh, it's incredible. It's almost so it is over a million dollars in sales. Um, I reason why I introduced the other individuals here is that he's the fifth closest store. And I just want to point out that one of the stores, SIP, uh, did not report sales. And I don't think that that was intentional. Apparently, he got his license in uh, June, around June 2023. So obviously, there was a he, he couldn't even submit any uh, sales figures, and there was a mix-up with the okay. uh, prior one. Tell me again who you who you are representing. Gary's Wine and Liquor, which is uh, and that was a removal from a different location. Three mo removals. <laughs> Okay. During the, the uh, Gary's Wine and Liquor has been operating for 26 years, uh, has no uh, adverse license history at all, and with the gross sales figures that I That's just... That's your only client? Is there someone else? And nobody else wants to pay money <laughs> for me. To, no, that happens to be true. Okay. Um, the, um, see, now you got me off track. Uh, Oh, the gross sales figures of uh, my client store, Gary's, has decreased uh, so substantially that they had to let go of their uh, employee who they've had for many, many years because the cost of running the store and the lack of uh, sales figures is very low. And then I just spoke to the gentleman who's here. He can go on record because since he was the fifth store, he never got a request of sales from. Uh, That's Mike's. No, it's uh, JF sixteen eighty eight. Okay. And so SIP, since they didn't report, uh, 
he becomes the, the in essence, store. The store. and he's here, and he has he can go on record and tell you. And he just told me he had some. Does you? Yes, okay. he's had substantial decrease in sales. Yeah, no, I see huge decreases here. Is anybody here from Sterling? That's Sterling. That's you, Sterling. Yeah. Okay. And um, I read your letter. You said that you've opposed three previous applications. It was uh, yes. So yeah, um, I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Steve. Uh, I represent Sterling Liquor. So in the past year, I was approached twice at Crenergy, which later became Guana's Wine Studio. Mm -hmm. It's on Union Street and Third Ave, I believe, Fourth Ave. Um, and then there was another. Um, I think it's on Fourth Ave. I think it's in a Morrow. I don't remember the business name. It, it's very close to the F, the end train. Um, those are the two and. I was approached by them about this because we didn't get a letter um, reporting our gross Were figures. Were those applications denied? No, Gowanus, the Crenergy did go through. They are on third half. They are called uh, Gowanus Wine Studio. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I believe that Fourth Avenue place is is approved as well. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to echo some of the earlier sentiments. The you know at, at this point. You could stand on, you know, Flatbush Ave or a rock. You're gonna hit some wine shop or trip over their, you know, sandwich boards and for about free tastings. And it's just they're everywhere. Um, and our sales have been down a lot, considerably. Um, so just wanted to get that across. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as far as population in the last five years from 2017 to 2021, the population increased by almost 6.1%. Uh, that's exhibit C that I have on my supplemental. However, the population was reported down in 2021 and the biggest increase was in 2018. Also to put into proper perspective, the actual population from 2017 to 2021 increased only approximately 2,500 people. So for that entire period for 11219. So the percentage really isn't a true reflection of a pretty much stagnant population. Okay. Hi. Hi. Like, uh, we're from Gary's Wine and Liquor. This is myself and my From husband. where? Gary's Wine. The first Gary's. closest. Oh, you're from yes, Gary's. The okay. Yes. Store. We're in business since uh, 97. That's 27 years. We diligently serving the area. We see people and children now. They grow up. We know, we know people. Uh, we offer at the store um, global variety, premium wines and spirits uh, in a friendly environment, very friendly with customers. Uh, we have good reviews. Uh, we have natural wines. We offer organic wines. Uh, we go above and beyond to, to serve the community. Uh, we attend different events. Uh, we also, we're always up to date with the new wines, new spirits. Um, um, 45 seconds. Okay, the, the closest, the, the new proposed location is uh, under one minute to us, like literally normal walking, it's uh, under a minute to get to a new location. So I don't know, it's, uh, the area is oversaturated and... My oh, sorry. The area is oversaturated with stores and uh, I don't think we need another store. How often do you bring in uh, new SKUs? to satisfy the customer's needs? Often, we, we everything is a personal testing. Uh, they come to the store, the salespeople come to the store and we get, uh, you know, we uh, constantly, my husband constantly attends the events and uh, how often you bring new stuff? Almost every day something comes new. Something new, yeah. yeah. Okay. He likes the- I he like likes my job. He likes his job. It's, he likes the, you like the shopping part. Yes, of it. he likes the industry. Yeah, he likes uh, testing new stuff. New, like he's up. He's up there. He always read magazines. He always like uh, 
very knowledgeable. If you come, he always have a suggestion with what you want to eat and how is this and how is that. He always speak to the customers. So that's okay. how we are. Chairman, can I just interject? What's the off average cost of a bottle, you think? Do you have a the sense? We have like start from six ninety nine. And what's the most expensive and item? Like two, three hundred. Two, three hundred. We all offer right. different, yes. Different vintages right. and uh, unique stuff we also have for somebody who really knows wines. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks for coming. I'd just like to point out that I don't deny that the store is within a huge residential complex. It's 51 stories and it has approximately 864 units. But it is interesting that uh, the size of this new store, uh, I understand, is about 660 square feet total with about 360, 380 square feet of retail space. And the reason why that I emphasize that is because all the stores in this area, at least the, the five ones that uh, that we've been talking about, all are really mom-pop stores. Uh, the Gary's Wine and Liquor is 700 square feet with 650 square feet being retail. Uh, Fort Green is 1150 square feet with retail being 760. Sip Wines is 950 with 500 being uh, square feet being retail. Thirst Merchants, 481 feet with 390 being uh, retail okay. space. So they're, so they're all really, in essence, like mom pop stores. Yeah, no, I know. Which one is the one that's bulletproof? Um, the last one, I think, but bear with me a second. Mike? Yes, the farthest okay. one, yeah. All right. Is there a public school? In the and area? there's a, yes. The two, is the building open? No, it's about 202 feet. <laughs> from the, the, the location uh, but again there's a question as whether it's on the uh, same street or level but since it's 202 feet I didn't bring it up but it's under construction and it's no, a main it's not, it's done. School oh it's done the school yet to start. They're ready. All done. They're all done. September okay all done. my fault and um, yes it is a big complex just uh, but it's it's a, a little bit of, across the street from uh, from their their premises and applicants. Sir? Okay. Hello again. Uh, I just wanted to introduce once again Jade Hankinson and Rosella Palazzo. They've been collectively been in the wine and spirits industry for over 20 years, having operated a successful East Village restaurant called Probaco in the early 2000s. They intend to take that experience and passion for I'm wine. I'm sorry, they operated a restaurant? In the early 2000s, yes. Okay, but it's not in the application. Because this was almost 20 years ago. The application, I think, goes to up to five years. I was not one of the operators. I was an Assistant manager, yeah. Okay. I see. And you both worked in a restaurant or no? They yes, did. Yes, we did both work there together 20 years ago. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. So with that, the knowledge, the relationships that they've uh, cultivated over these years, the idea was to take that background and open up a very niche Italian focused higher end wine store in this new neighborhood. I know the numbers that were given by opposition are, are skewed. The school, first of all, is 293 feet away. And it's not 202 feet away. And it's in a mixed use building. It's not a, a dedicated building for a school. And it will open in the fall. Uh, with respect to Gary's, the closest competition in terms of uh, wine sales is Gary's. They've only submitted financial data up through September, June of 2023, which to me is a disingenuous because everyone in the industry knows you do your bulk of the business October, November, December. So from the half of the year, they're still at half of their, pro half of their revenues in 23. I'd like to see the rest of the year. I guarantee you they're on point or maybe slightly lower. Be it as it may, the closest analogy that I can make with respect to them being a, a package store where they sell nips, for example, which attracts a certain type of customer, grab and go customer. They have a huge selection of, uh, of uh, commercial wines. These are the wines that you see advertised in windows. You see these advertised in magazines. These are the ones that do commercial cultivating. They do pesticide farming. 
this is not what this Probaco store's intention is to be. It's a very small store, of, uh, a, a sales floor of just over 300 feet, higher end Italian wines. Gary's average price is 15 to $20. The average price in this store is intention between 25 up, up to $2,000. They wanna buy higher end Italian wines and uh, craft spirits. It's as if a Maserati dealer opens up right next door to a Honda dealer. Are they both cars? Yes. Are they serving the same customer? No. As I mentioned, there is no competition because they're not going after the same customer, they're not going after the same demographic. They don't carry the same wines. There will be no commercial wines in Probaco. There will be no commercial spirits in Probaco. In fact, in the lease, prohibits them from selling nips or anything less than a 750, which is a standard bottle of wine. So they're... they're, they're when you mean commercial, you mean like... Big brand names. Okay. Like you see, the, you see them on windows, you see them in other states, they have them in their supermarkets. They won't carry these brands. But you don't plan on doing internet sales? They want to do uh, local deliveries. I don't think Gary's even has a website. So um, not internet sales, but local deliveries through the internet. If that's, if that's what you mean by internet. If it's out of state, no, that's not the intention. It's to stay within the neighborhood. And this is a new neighborhood. This is a Atlantic Yards. This is a brand new building that's been built over the tracks. Right, but the building is not open. Their building is open. Oh, it's absolutely Your building is open. Yes, yes. Okay. And across the street, there's a, they approved 3,200 yeah, 3, additional units right across the street. So it's a brand new neighborhood. There is a void in the higher end wine market. And all these stores that are listed here, none, none of them offer the same product that these applicants intends to sell. There are over 100,000 different labels of wines in the world. I mean, they don't want to do any of the commercial wines that are being sold in these other stores. And like I said, they're, they're targeting a different market, a different demographic, a higher end. Mercedes doesn't compete with Honda and vice versa. So the perception of, of competition is, is just a gossamer veil to, to hide what's really going on here. And like I mentioned, there was that map that was submitted by opposition. All, none of those stores are niche stores. None of those offer the same price range. None of them offer the same products. The other thing that they intend on the store is having wine classes, free wine classes for the neighborhood, which based on their, their, their relationships with wine producers, specifically Italian wine producers, they come in, they explain their wines, they explain the winemaking process. Um, and that's something that's very important to them to be able to educate the consumer. That's closer to Atlantic. Oh, what do you think? With an emphasis, uh, a focus on women winemakers, since they both uh, have those relationships. Chairman. All right. No, I, I don't think we need it. So I am so supportive of you guys, you know. I respect that you have a friendship from, you know, for decades and trying to do this business together, but this area is just way oversaturated. There, you know, there are the no, drops no are retail stores on this on this block. It's all new. It's not about the block, it's it's about the area. I mean, as he said, it's fourteen stores within a half mile. And have, everyone is showing not just a little drop, but very significant drops. And so I would encourage you to find a different location and do this venture elsewhere. For now, I'm going to vote to deny. Sure, if I may, Commissioner before you vote, Mr. Chairman, well, I also own and operate a wine store. And there has been a, a decrease after the, the COVID bump, but it's not because of poor operation or poor selection. There's been a change in the lower end of the market. January has become, for the younger uh, demographic, a dry January, kill sales. The higher end of the market. You. Well, the higher end of the market, the older people that we're targeting, they I don't I support that. I understand what you're saying. The chair has voted, and I happen to concur with the chair. As I look at the numbers here, they are all significantly down, all five. One, literally in the millions. I, we, that, we just can't. Which one are you referring to, Chairman? Uh, I'm looking Mr. at. Commissioner. I'm looking at Green Grape. I'm looking at Gary's. I'm looking at Thirst. I'm looking. Well, Gary's at only Mike's. gave half a half of the year. Yeah. All right. The weakest part of the year. That's they disingenuous. Are, they are all down, and we have. I, I am a firm believer in using some kind of a standard. I've said this a number of times here. I look at 2019 if I can, and I disregard the COVID years. Correct. Whatever months I have for 2023, 
now we're in 2024, but whatever months I have for 2023, I divide whatever figure I have by those months and then multiply it by 12 gives me some standard so I don't feel I'm being arbitrary and capricious. And when I do that, the numbers here all show a significant decrease. I, I, perhaps, I, I think they're skewed. However, right, again, sir, sir, Maserati does sir, not compete with members Honda. have already voted. I, I understand that we've already both voted and, and we have uh, men, men. qualified applicants. I, I, and I hope you find another location, but I do concur with the chair and vote to deny. All right. Uh, next item is eight, La Negra. Restaurant Corp. Don, what number? Uh, it's a uh, number eight. Eight. Want to go ahead and put your name on the record. My name is Alejandro Noisy. Yes. This is number eight. Yep. It's a sell to intox charge. But that was dismissed by an ALJ. ALJ. Okay, I'm gonna dismiss. Thanks for coming in. I'm sorry you had to come here. I also vote to dismiss. This case is next? Yeah. Yes. Uh, are we gonna get any letter on email statement? So you'll get a letter. Yes, you'll get a letter saying that the charge been that the charge has been dismissed. Okay. Yeah, because we are kind of confused. Uh, we know that it was dismissed, but we still we uh, we got called on that on uh, on an email. So after these days, we're gonna get a uh, letter, right? You, you'll get a letter. Yeah. So what you received was the so that was the ALJ report, which was the yeah, recommendation. Yeah, we get uh, well the same day we get the report and the letter of controversy, and month later we get the uh, the uh, hearing date and stuff. Yeah. This was just to basically adopt what what that report. That's right. what happened here. But yeah, you'll get another letter. Thank you, sir. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks for coming Have in. Have a good one. Thank you. Uh, next is 34, Serena S I L L C. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Neil Vasaki for the applicant, Serena SILC. I'm here with the uh, with the owner, Alan Alva Clara. Um, so I just want to mention a couple of things. First, uh, kindly, the uh, my applicant has absolutely no connection with the prior licensee who had problems at that spot. There's no affiliation whatsoever. My client, uh, you the have rest an agreement of, with community board, right? We met with the community board. They gave us a stipulation. They're very much in favor. He and actually you're okay with the stipulations. <clears throat> yes, he's fine with them. He signed off on them. Okay, so I have 4 a.m. across the board, live music, karaoke, DJ, recorded music, uh, no jukebox, um, entertainment level music indoors, whatever that means. Um, so no true. outdoor space. Right. Correct. Um, but then it says here, I will not have music indoors, which I'm confused. You also check that off? Uh, that might have been a clerical error. I'm sorry. No, we never checked off. Okay, it says here, I will not have music. Oh, I will not have music outdoors. I'm outdoors. sorry. Oh. I cannot read. Um, so, my, so my client... So, no, 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 you don't read. need to do that. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to run through this. I understand. Will not have TVs or monitors outside. No third party promoters. You know what that means, right? Okay, so no ticketed events. Not a nightclub, right? <clears throat> Not gonna be a nightclub. This is just a rest is a restaurant that's open until four AM. And you're gonna have food the whole time. Yes. Okay. Um and then if you wanna change anything, you're gonna go back to C B three. Heart closed at four AM. Uh and that you will not use the streets under the DOT program. That's what it says here. Is that accurate? That you would not have an outdoor space? No, the way, the way you file the application. Yes. Okay, and that you will also not do valet or anything like that for parking outside. Is that accurate? It's, they say no valet on the street. No valet. On the street. 
Is yeah, no, no valet on the street, no yes. illegal double park, no blocking spots. Correct. Okay. So with that, with the community board's um, stipulations, I'm going to vote to approve. I also vote to approve with the stipulations of with the community board. Okay, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is 59, SADCAP, LLC. Good morning. All right, sir, thanks for coming back. What did we learn? What did we learn from last time? Uh, good morning. This is Sandra Hunt. I'm the attorney representing Mr. Ronald Williams. That's on my left. Uh, also, we submitted initially to the board after we reviewed the material from Mr. Londell Davis. Uh, we found out that was actually STEM dated, if I'm not mistaken, for 2000. I'm sorry, it was what? Mr. Londell Davis. And then we found out on the letter that was initially stamped uh, late 2022. That's after all the facts and incidents occurred with the police department. So we review carefully all the facts and allegations from Mr. Lundell. I just want to say uh, after, you know, we submitted the personal statement from Mr. Ronald Williams, the applicant, uh, pretty much all the allegations that were actually written on the letter was in fact not true. Uh, one of them was actually allegating that Mr. Ronald Williams and his wife, they were like co-managers and owners of the establishment. That means uh, that the, uh, the actual applicant could be a valid delicalizer, which in fact was not true. And the initial personal questionnaire when the examiner asked us for the records of the past employment for the L Lounge, we did close that information after the fact. But initially, in the beginning, when we applied for the applications, we want to say uh, the reason that it was actually not part of the application, it wasn't intentional because Normally, when I file the personal question with a client, I usually do it in front of them. And I ask them personally, especially the second page, what are the, the past five years of your full-time employment history that you worked before? So he tried to write out as truthful as possible. Uh, it wasn't intentional. And uh, because the l wasn't really a steady job back then, in back in 2022, as we initially declared on the letter, that it was actually in and out job. He was working as a kitchen chef. He was never uh, hired as a manager, neither was a co-owner of the establishment. And also in his personal statement, we declared that Lindell, Lindell was actually spelled wrong on the letter. And then his wife was not uh, in the business. She was an probation officer. So there was no way she could have applied for a legal license back then. And also back uh, in 2022, he never opened a restaurant. So he's been working at the Department of Parks, according to a personal questionnaire and employment history that we declared before. So there was no way that he could have opened a restaurant back then until now that he took over the place of 598 Grand Corkers, which in fact he had no connections whatsoever with the past owner. And also, we also submitted evidence from the previous manager, Lache Bones, and she testify that all the allegations were in fact not true and she was in fact the manager and as far as I'm concerned if the owner of the establishment is in charge of the of such business he should be held accountable for whatever course with the NYPD and not the employees. I understand he be, he's being like I would say hurt by the, the, uh, the loss of his legal license back then in 2022 but that should not be uh, damaging the reputation of Mr. Ronald Williams, he in fact was a more employee. Uh, also, I would like to also mention that, you know, for you to take in consideration, since we applied for the legal license last year, we were waiting for so long and being operating for the temporary permit, he understood the, the limited hours operation. And also he never had any complaint with NYPD, uh, never have any problems with the customers. And we have a lot of supports uh, from the community itself, right? And that is something that will let you to also take in consideration those facts. It and says also, here that you were going to bring a bunch of people. Did you bring a bunch of people? Uh, yes. yes, we did. Yes, we did. So that's something I want to mention, like to allow these people to testify in support of, of the application. Yeah. That's something that Mr. William wanted to give a shot, at least to bring something to the table. Yeah, All right, so you guys come up. Um, If you want to show your support for his character and fitness to hold this license, please uh, say a few things. 
Uh, good morning, commissioners. Good afternoon, commissioners and chair. Uh, my name is George Lucas. I'm a Bronx resident, uh, formerly of Harlem. I've known Ronald Williams for some years. Um, I have been to the establishment in the Bronx. I've seen uh, communities there. Uh, I work at Montefiore on the Einstein campus. We've had after hours events there. It's a well organized place. Um, I can, you know, speak after to his hours meaning ending at um, after 5 p.m. after work hours for us. Sorry. Um, we've established there. Um, it's a, a great place to be and he's a respectable uh, operator of, of the space. So I did want to make sure that I okay. came on record. And what are you doing Fury, sir? I'm a director of operations at a, a developmental disabilities clinic. Uh, we're on the Jacoby campus, the RFK Kennedy Center. How long in that position? Uh, two years in that position. I've been with Monty for 10 years. Thank you very much. I was with Einstein. I, uh, Monty took over Einstein. So altogether it's 10 years. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. No problem. Thank you. How you doing? Good afternoon. My name is Desmond Ryan. I'm better known in Harlem and to New York as DJ Webster. I'm a platinum selling recording artist, Grammy Award winning so you know, I'm not here to brag about anything, but I've been doing, I've been doing community work in Harlem in the Bronx for the last 13 years. I, I even received a proclamation from the, the state the last three years in a row. I met Mr. Williams during the pandemic and he's been helping me provide uh, food um, and, and feed families. We do a toy drive. We just did one. We do, I've been doing it for 13 years. I just did it at the um, at RSL Lounge where we provided um, toys for thousands of kids. Um, that's um, this Christmas. Um, without him, a lot of this won't be possible. I came today because I was aware of the letter that Mr. Um, Davis um, wrote to you guys. Um, he's also a family friend of mine. And, and Mr. Davis, um, a lot of things in the letter he, he, wrote, he wrote wasn't true. Mr. Davis has owned a <laughs> lounge in the restaurant since I was about five years old in Harlem. If anybody was running his business down the hole or getting that many tickets over that amount of time, he would have fired them a long time ago. He was really the chef in the kitchen. I, I spoke to a friend of mine who used to work with you guys, Kevin Kim, and I consulted with him before I came, and he was just like, just go and just tell him how, how, how good of an operator he is because he's really a great operator. He's also been hiring people from the direct community to work at his establishment. It's a domestic violence shelter a few blocks away. We feed them. We help feed the kids from the basketball team across the street at the school. He's really a good operator, and he provides a safe space for a lot of people of my, my color, my age to go in one of the worst areas in the Bronx. He's been there for a year and a half um, with, a, with, a, with a temporary license, I think. It has, hasn't been one incident, one fight, one police thing, nothing. He's really a good operation. I just want you guys to take that in consideration. And I just want to say thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've known him since he was five or since you were five? said that you've known him since you were five? No, I said Mr. Davis has owned uh, a lounge since, he, since I was five years old. So uh, I was just I saying that if, if he's been owning something that long, he wouldn't let nobody run his business down a hole over that accumulation of time. He would have fired him a long but time he ago. he didn't own the one before where he was a chef? No, he didn't own that one. He, he worked out. I, I was talking about Mr. Um, Davis who, who wrote the letter. The letter. Okay. I was saying he oh, wouldn't let right. nobody, he wouldn't let nobody run his business out of hole. Like if you look at all the tickets and summonses and all the problems at Al Lounge, I'm familiar with the Al Lounge. If he was operating the Al Lounge, it would have been probably still been open. He's a great operator. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Edwin Dennis. I'm in the security field. I do private contract security. And as Mr. Um, Mr. Ronald here, me and him were friends. I started out in that area years ago, and I'm talking about, you know, Bronx. I, I came over to RSL seeking employment. He told me, he said, just hang on. We're trying to get everything correct. Um, you know, while I'm there, you know, I, I just oversee certain things, make sure everything is running correct. We've never had a problem. I have a good relationship with the NYPD over there. No complaints. We comply with everything, whatever they want. They always come up to us and commend us. Thank you. You know, just make sure any, any time, just reach out to us and we do that. We have no problems, no issues in the establishment ever. That's it. Are you licensed, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Been licensed since 2016. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Dennis. You right. Are you sir. planning to work at the establishment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are, you, are you retired law enforcement? No. 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 Good morning. Yeah, excuse the and coming from work. 
But I work overnights. So I do construction. I'm a bridge demolition foreman. I also do private contract work. I've known Ronald now for a little over three years. And in all honesty, I'm not going to speak about his operation skills. I'm going to speak about him as a person. As a person, he's established a lot. We have a lot in common. He needed some help with RSL, doing some work inside. You know, me and my guys come down. The owner of the company I work for, Michael Capasso, with CAC, he's even spoken with him about doing some things as far as we do turkey drives, we do toy giveaways every year in Harlem. We do it in the Bronx. I've even intertwined those two together to try to build something bigger for the community. Right now, we have a job on the Grand Concourse where his establishment is, and we're doing a bridge on the Grand Concourse now for MTA, with MTA and Carnet involved. And there's actually been times where we had to gain interest to his establishment, and he's given to, like, Connect guys and my guys that I run. And, you know, hands down, it's been no, nothing, look, not looking for anything in return, just humbleness. And I've even started, and friends of mine, family members, I had my sister-in-law's birthday party there, cousin's birthday party there. I had two coworkers wanted to have parties there. And... Just as, like I said, as a person, it wasn't a thing of charging or let me make some money. So I can't speak for the Lionel Davis situation, but I can speak for the person I know and that I've seen him become even over these three years. He's worked hard. He's dedicated time to this place. And again, no incidents. I'm out there because I work nights. If I didn't believe in him, didn't really feel it, I wouldn't be here right now because I haven't been asleep. But uh, he definitely has shown me improvement in just three years and the way he cares about the kids. We got kids that come in there from playing basketball. You know, he gives them sodas. It's times we've sat outside together and bought kids McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? And all types of other things that I could go on with. But, you know, at some point I'm just asking, even on behalf of me, because I love going there myself. My dad is 76 years old. He goes there, you know what I mean? So, and my dad is very stush and bougie. So if it was a place of problem or incident, he would not take part in it, you know what I mean? So I ask to please approve him so I can still have a place to call home myself. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, sir, something to <clears throat> Hi, so my name is Ronald Williams. I've been, oper I've been a good operator for the last 13 months with no incidents. My son goes to school down the block. He plays for football, right with the school that Rondell mentioned in the letter. I feed the, the football team when they come out of school, even some of the teachers and their parents come and hang out while the kids are practicing. And I've been a good operator. I had no incidents. And I yeah. think I deserve the liquor license. Okay, so your wife is now not a prom prom probational officer? She's retired. She's retired, yes. and so she's going to be working at this location? No, just me. <clears throat> okay, because it says here that I thought I read in the application that it says that she's going to work there. No. My. She's right here. Okay. All right, so she's not going to work there? No. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, Thank you for bringing all your support. Free drinks are not allowed, but you should thank them for showing up. You know, people come here for protests. Very few people come here to support another person. So yeah. it means a lot to us. Um, with the community board support, um, I'm going to vote to approve with DJ Jukebox karaoke recorded live music, 4 a.m. across the board. Um, I'm sorry you had some prior issues with the police. I hope um, you stay in good relationship with that, with you know the local precinct and um, yes. continue doing the work that you're doing in your community. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, I note the letters of support that we've received. Also, the witnesses who appeared here today and testified on your behalf. Um, and I also note that we did receive information regarding your prior employer that mm -hmm. cast. Yes some doubt and questionability on his credibility. 
so with all that said, I'm also going to vote to approve, and I wish you the best. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yep. Have a good day. Next is 55 Dalfo Wine and Liquors Inc. Number 55. Opposition, correct. You're in opposition, correct? Good afternoon. Howard Levine in opposition to the application. Uh, we were here last a couple of weeks ago and I have him put his name in. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Solomon, representative for the applicant, Deflo Wine and Liquors, and with me is Tarath Singh. And you got what you needed this time around. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Howard Levine for objectants, uh, many of which are here with me today. We were here at the last meeting, and uh, one of the main issues uh, for the reason why it was put over is because there's a discrepancy in the size of the location. I don't know if that's been addressed. I did make a request for additional submissions, but I didn't receive any. So uh, again, the issue was that the calculations based on the diagrams don't match the calculations based in the application itself. Um, ha has that been addressed to the? I don't. Yeah, I, I thought I had. To, sorry, I thought I had submitted it. It's it's strictly a clerical error. Um, clearly, the basement cannot, uh, on an attached building, the basement cannot extend beyond the footprint of the rest of the building. Right. So the footprint of the basement is exactly the same as what is listed in the for the first floor for the actual store. Also, to it, the only half of the basement is going to be used by the applicant. For storage, so it's actually, if again, about eleven, about twelve hundred feet for the store. You talk about six hundred feet for the basement for storage. So the issue with that, of course, is while the basement could be larger than the ground floor, even if it's not, even if it's the same size as the ground floor, that would make it twenty-two hundred feet total, where the application uh, in section three indicates that it's 1300 square feet, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it to the board to address that. Um, at the end of the day, what we have here is a classic case of oversaturation. There are eight stores or nine stores within a half a mile. Uh, I submitted to you a diagram that shows you exactly where all the stores are. They're all a stone's throw from each other. And, um, the public convenience and advantage will not be served by including yet another store when there's already so so many within half a mile in this walking community. The sales, there are some increases in sales. I would suggest that they're very modest and that the sales themselves are very modest and that any increase uh, may be attributable to the fact that there have been increases in the cost of goods and inflation and that that requires an increase in the cost of the sale price and that that might demonstrate why there have been some increases the the closest store however had a very small gain very modest gain it's only at 519 for uh 2023 sna liquors is is the same uh, East Ocean is a specialty shop. We know that its license is significantly limited. It can only sell 70% Asian products, 20% New York products, and only 10% inventory for everything else. Uh, 7th Avenue Wine, which was a transfer in 2022, um, operated on a temporary in 2022, which obviously would limit its ability to buy on credit, which would reduce its inventory. Then it got approved in 2023 when it could buy on credit. And I think that that's why there was um, some gains there. And, and Don Brothers Inc., which is also an objectant, has had a loss. I submitted uh, information to the board about the population in the area and it's either flat or it's going down. Uh, it has gone down since uh, 2015 in 2022, which is the last uh, number that I was able to gain and, and, and provide. And there's been no significant expansion in this, in this area. Again, while it's not a statutory disqualification, 
the premises is located on the same block as a preschool and within two blocks of two public schools. There are no major construction projects that are going on. There has not been any shopping venues or sports venues. There are no new transit stops and uh, the likelihood of a sudden influx of additional population is, is minimal to, uh, to zero. Nine stores, half a mile. Uh, you, you remember just very, very briefly, the last time we were here, I was advocating for a store in Larchmont. The location was the best I've seen in 30 years. You'll probably remember it was attached to a monster sized stop and shop and a CVS and everything else. And what the board had mentioned was, yes, you know, the, the location is absolutely wonderful, but there's more than one dispositive factor. And the, the problem, the other dispositive factor was the other stores had flat sales. Here, there are slight increases. I think that they're attributable to inflation. There is such oversaturation in this area that any increases um, should not be, should be overshadowed by the fact that the, there's nine stores and a half a mile. I'd like to very briefly introduce the objections to you. They'll make very, very brief statements. I realize there's a lot of other people still to go. So thank you very much. Um, my name is Sheila, Sheila Young. Um, uh, I'm the owner of the SNA Liquid, uh, which is a half mile away from the New African. Uh, I really want to let you know that we had a store, me and my husband had a store um, like 13 years ago. And we focus, we focus on education for the customers, such as uh, uh, wine tasting. And then we have, we spend a lot of money for the new inventory, which is a new, uh, like, a, uh, like a Chinese liquors and wine and, and Koreans, of course, Americans and American liquor and wine and such a, also like a South African wine and uh, South, okay. uh, you know, um, different kind of wine. Uh, we spend a lot of money on that. Me and my husband's working really hard to keep the store open, uh, to make a living, trying really hard this, this recent year. And, and uh, also we, we try to keep the door open for the public communion and needs, and also as support our own family. And I really um, want to mention that there's a, too many store nearby. Um, really, don't need any more new store. Thank you so much. That would all right, be all. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank you. This is close to two schools, but it's not within within 200 foot, right? Forgive me, say that again. It's close to two schools, but it's not within 200 feet. No, there's no statutory disqualification. It's just worth noting. And it's on the same block as a preschool. On the same block as a preschool. Okay. Hi, my name is Yelly, um, 7th Avenue Wine Spirits. So um, like uh, our lawyer mentioned that we were um, transferred to us in 2022. And um, it seems there was an increase for 2023. But as a matter of fact, we compared the 2020 sales January to March to uh, this year's January, March, uh, January to March 2024 this year, just recently, actually our sales went down and factoring the inflation. So you see that the sales is going down. Plus we, have, we offer a great variety of wine and liquors and we, we are very customer friendly. We educate them, uh, let them know and introduce the product we have, or we're very um, happy to order the, the one, offer the one that they, they would like and we don't have. So I would say we're very customer friendly. And um, also um, we offer wine tasting, um, wine educations about liquors. Um, so, a great variety. So I don't feel that there's um, another need for more stores currently. As um, our lawyer mentioned, the population is kind of decreasing, um, especially like 
pandemic. My friends, especially like my friends, I know my friends. A lot of them moving out of New York, moving out of Fibro. You will, I mean, you probably question why you're still here. Well, because uh, our store is here. It's what we make for our, for a living, so we had to stay. But with people with choice options, they actually moving out of New York. Um, another thing is that, um, as you know, that this, the location um, very close. There is a KTV lounge which um, operates a lot, uh, like two very late hours, and also offer liquors. And recently, I don't remember exactly what time, but very recently there was a gun shooting. So with another liquor store around with people that already drunk, is that really for a community benefit? That's all I have to say. What time do you open now? We open um 10. 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. And you close? Well, we extend our, um, we changed from, we used to open only from 12 to um, 9. So we changed our a little bit earlier because the customer requests. So we currently open to uh, from 10 to 9. And then on the weekends, we, uh, we close, at, the latest, we close at 11. Thank you. Only one, uh, only Friday and Saturday we close at 11. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, ma'am uh, from SLA, what are your hours? Just. Uh, oh, my hour is uh, from, my husband come early, 8.30, sometime 9 o'clock to 9.30. Thank you. Yeah. Sir? Hi, my name is John, um, Sean. I'm from the owner of um, Don Discount Wine Liquor. About, um, I'm about like 11 blocks from the applicant, 26 miles. I'm located at 7112 for Hamilton Parkway. Our sale for last year have a minor increase due to the Uber sale because we do not deliver for the Uber, so we have minor increase. But for the for the January, February, and March 2024, the sale is coming down because I don't know I think Uber sale is very bad right now. Like last week, I did like $50. <laughs> and come so I believe that for the 2024, that should be a huge drop for myself. So I don't think that was like uh, necessary for another liquor store. And meanwhile, we carry a variety of the wines, such as like New York wine, spirit, organic, um, sugar-free, Asian. And we always, I'm always there. So I'm open to suggestion for all my customers. Whatever they want, we carry them for them. So it's very good for the public community. Okay. And we also provide tasting for our customer, um, description tab, uh, materials, and for them to carry home, for them to write, to read what wine they pair with. And not only that, we also care about the community safety because there's a lot of drunk people recently. They just come in and I refuse to sell them like a small little nip. They just bring my box. They just bring my window <laughs> for okay. no reason. I, I refuse to sell them. They just bring my window. Been a wonderful no reason. Uh, I called a cop. They already left. So I mean, there's a lot of homeless walking around on the block, which means it's not. It's, it's a lot of studio on the block. There's like five square at the at that for Hamilton. So it's very, very dangerous for people who's trying you're trying to they act violent, but they keep drinking. So uh, for me, I rather take my loss than to put them in like probably not safety. You know, Tiger High is a very quiet place. It's not like a Crowd areas and smaller area, but you know, it's the public, public safety is more concerned by doing do more business. So I mean, for us, I rather lose business than getting people on the street. So I mean, I'm like not far from the applicant, like 0.6 miles. So I mean, I, that's uh, the reason I'm here today. So I don't think there's any necessary because there's always saturated with like nine or ten stall on 0.6 mile. So what are your hours, sir. My own, we open from Monday to Friday. We open from 11 to 8.30. Okay. And on Saturday, we open to 9 o'clock. And Sunday, we close at 8 o'clock, 8.30. So thank you. thank you. Anybody else? A lot of people. Hi, this is Helen Nang. Um, I actually represent for my cousin store is um, New Century Liquor. So we are kind of based on what what he told me is like we are so close to each other, and we have a school uh, areas, and the sales is not too good, and he cannot be here today because it's very short-handed, and he had to be in the store. Okay, thank you. You're always you. Uh, we open at ten and then close at eight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
New Century as uh, owner was here last time around and brought to the board's attention that uh, he was licensed in uh, 2021, so it's relatively new. Hello, my name is Sean Liu, and I'm coming here on behalf of 5012 Shaheen Liquor Corp. I feel like there's too many liquor stores already in the neighbor, and I don't believe it will bring any kind of benefit to the neighbor to have an additional one. In your hours, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. from Monday all the way through Sundays. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to know how are you. My name is Tony Kai. I'm from Nice Liquor, NYINC. Um, we are um, close to the, you know, the new applicant. So, uh, same thing in 2023. Um, from 2022 to 2023, and then we business is dropped down to like more than 10%. So now, really, really difficult to run in because uh, in my area, uh, it's a Jewish area, but we still have a problem with the, you know, the security over there because it's not the safety. People still come over to store from my store. And I hope we not open another new one. Your hours, sir? Sorry. What hours are you open? Well, our open, we open 11 to 10. 11 to 10, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Sir? Good afternoon again. Um, First of all, as to the, you know, as to the prime issue of being public advantage and convenience, um, when you're dealing with Brooklyn and Manhattan and so on and so forth, you're dealing with avenues. You know, my client is on Fort Hamilton Parkway. So first of all, the one um, objectant who was on Fort Hamilton Parkway was on 71st Street. My client is on 60th Street. 11 blocks is quite a big distance in general in Brooklyn, Manhattan, and so on and so forth. Also, uh, from the, what I received as far as, you know, any objections, he was not listed in, the, you know, what I what I did receive from the authority from Mr. Levine. Just want to confirm that. The two closest stores are on 12th Avenue. I'm oh, sorry, 11th Avenue. So again, when you're dealing with Brooklyn, someone on 11th Avenue and someone on Fort Hamilton Parkway, which again, Fort Hamilton Parkway is the one avenue in Brooklyn that runs on an angle. So again, depending upon where you are, it's how, how close actually, is this to um, your to the grocery store? Um, the closest one is about 1,100 feet, and the second one, which is about between 15 and 1,600 feet. Um, so he has two right there. Well, then again, right there is is up for interpretation. When different avenues is in Brooklyn, and again in Manhattan, it's not right there. And again, you know, I'm you, just asking you exactly how far his other licensed premises are. Oh wait, oh wait. Sorry, I'm. I thought you were referring to the objectives. Um, no. I'm asking about his other business. Again, he has another, he doesn't have the grocery store anymore? No, no, no. Okay. No. But he used to have one. He used to have two, gro two grocery stores over the past. He hasn't had it for about a year now. And so from 2000, I think it was 13 to 19, he had one in Brooklyn. And then from 19 to 22, he had one in Queens. So that oh, okay. Queens is, you know. So you have other businesses? Not at the moment. Okay. So, so when you went to this location, you're aware that there is a preschool that is like two doors down from where you're starting a liquor store business. You're aware of that, right? Yeah, we, we, we're aware of that. Again, the preschool law has limited hours, obviously. I understand, uh, but no. if I were a parent and I go there looking for a school, I don't think I would want to enroll my child in a school that has a liquor store on the same block, essentially, right next door. I know there's no statutory exception of that, but I would, it's... I would disagree. In some ways, it may actually benefit public inconvenience. Parent is not saying, you know, they're going to go buy a bottle and then start drinking while picking up their son from school. But, again... Well, it depends the, how you the, look at it. I the mean, crowd I wouldn't want my child to be walking by a liquor store every well, single day well, going to school well, and learning what that is. So I, again, I personally would disagree with that 
premise. Um, people walk, they see, there's a Welcome 100 stores, you know, of all types, you know, um, some you agent You're welcome to builder. disagree. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, going to not find public convenience an advantage and vote to deny. The commissioner? The school concerns me also. But as I think about it, there have been many situations where I've had that and I've been concerned, but there wasn't a statutory bar. So when there isn't a statutory bar, I allow myself to be guided by that for the most part. Otherwise, I'd, I think I'd be denying a lot more applications. As I look at the numbers here, uh, council is right. There is an increase, but it's not insignificant. There are significant increases here. Uh, and again, for the benefit of everyone, I look at 2019 wherever possible. I disregard 2021, 22. I go to 2019 and then I take whatever months I have for 2023, whatever figure I have, I divide that figure by the months I have and then I multiply by 12. It is not a perfect uh, way of doing things. Um, I see an increase for New Century. Uh, I see a decrease for SNA. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do see a significant increase, and I mean a significant increase for East Ocean and for 7th Avenue, and, and there we're using 2022 figures, uh, I still see uh, almost a doubling in, 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 uh, in sales. Uh, so there is no statutory bar, um, and I do see an increase in sales in the area that seems to justify Another store, although I am very concerned about you being that Thank close you. to a preschool. However, one of the reasons that I did ask for the hours is to make some calculation in my mind of, you know, most stores said they open at 10 or 11. These kids are going to be in the school already and uh, they're going to be open when the, when the children leave. That's a different thing. But Again, there is no statutory bar, and I'm allowing myself to be guided by that. So I would vote to approve. Split decision, though, unfortunately. So the application is denied. Is denied. So it's denied, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Next is 36, Garaka Corporation. Thirty-six. I don't have anybody. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi. My name is Raymond Ayub. I'm coming with my friend because I felt I helped him fill his application. And it's a new uh, family restaurant in mixed area, Latino area. And uh, I have. I attached all my uh, lots of plant to see what it's about three three premises selling uh, liquor in the same block. I'm sorry, say that again. There are three other establishments on the same block. Yes. Okay, so did you meet with the community board? I'm sorry. Did you meet with the community board? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, and but the, for the at the time uh, closing time, this is what we disagree. But we're gonna convince to uh, change the closing time, like uh, gonna be eleven o'clock during the day, and one o'clock weekend, Friday Saturday. I'm sorry. Say that again. Uh, yeah, we have we have met in the uh, the community board. But uh, they rejected about it uh, for the time because we go. Is, uh, is the restaurant? Is the restaurant? Yes. yes is it operating now? No. No. Okay. So I think that the community board has some discomfort with your proposed method of operation because you're asking for recorded music, DJ, jukebox, karaoke, live music, with patron dancing, employee dancing, security guards, the and plan on using third party promoters no, no. all of that together i'm just saying to you that is it raises a lot of concern and there is apparently 
community opposition. You're right. And so, you know, you may be a qualified candidate, it's you know, not but the community board is not comfortable with it. And so, which, which I'm one? going to ask you to try to go back to the community board, maybe write a letter and tailor what your proposed method of operation is, and then amend your application and try again. Hmm. Does that make sense? Um, but we can make change in the, in the, the, the closing time and no dancing and no, no, live, no live music. He is going to be from 11, uh, 10 o'clock to 11, and 10 o'clock to 12 uh, weekend. Sir, I think you want to try to come to- And no dancing and no live music. Yeah, but we want the community board to hear that and, and the community board to be on board. We'd like for the two of you to come to an agreement. The community board is telling us no, they have objections. They consider the answers that you've given to be vague and, okay. and omitted. You have to fill in those blanks. They have to be comfortable. Okay. Uh, we, and we want them to be comfortable. We want you to come to an agreement with them, or we'd like to see you in business. Okay. Uh, as it stands now, I could not approve uh, this application. You're going to get a posted date, or? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, the cleanest thing to do, honestly, because the 500 foot hearing came out negative and finding no public interest. The best thing to do is probably just to start over, unfortunately. I realize that it's a long wait. Yes. So, you know, you can reach out to Juan Herrera tomorrow in licensing and, <laughs> and see how he advised you to move forward. I think that Juan will work with you. He's gonna give you his number right now. Okay. And and you're going to call him tomorrow and you're going to figure out what the game plan is, okay? Okay. Because okay. we want to help you. It's just that the community board is saying a hard no and this location it's have a, a prior cancellation and has a focal point. And so we don't want yeah. to license it without the community board being on. Yeah, it's a small okay. risk. Thank you. Okay. But I think that you can clarify. You can offer shorter hours and limit yes. what you plan to do there and really argue that you plan to be just a restaurant and only a restaurant and they may come on board supporting you. So I would like you to try again. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Jim. It's a denial, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right here. Oh, what? Information. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. giving that? Mm -hmm. All right, he's giving you something that you should guard your life sure. with. So that's my email right here. <laughs> or guard with your life, rather. <laughs> it's my email here, and then this is my work cell phone number. Yes. That is correct, yes. Uh, after 10 is fine. 10 o'clock after 10 a.m., yes. Herrera. Yes, thank you. All right, you guys have a good one. Next is number two, La Corona Bar Corp. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. Alberto Torres on behalf of La Corona Restaurant, Fiesta, also known as Fiesta Mexicana. And with me is Julia Velez, who's the principal. Uh, okay. We were here back in February making a presentation. And at that moment in time, there was a request with reference to a letter or an affidavit uh, that we had submitted from Maria Tavares with reference to that she is no longer going to be involved uh, in the restaurant. Uh, this is a restaurant that has been open since 2008. Was she not involved before? Or you're no, no longer going to be involved? She was never involved. She, that was a separate entity separately that had nothing to do with this one um this one so i thought that we were getting financial information no you we just, just is that uh, not accurate no, no just, an, just an, you just requested an affidavit yeah but the affidavit is coming from the person who's saying she's no longer going to be a part right it's not coming from the applicant no my understanding is that you wanted something from that person saying that she's no longer, she's not involved at any, in, in any capacity yeah. with this entity. Uh, and then she's saying that she has her right. own job. She has a child that she's taking care of. Right. And, and maybe there was a, I certainly want to be clear about this now and going forward. 
I think a situation like this, you want an applicant, uh, an affidavit from the applicant because that's the person that we can hold accountable to that sworn statement. A person who's no longer going to be involved with the business giving us an affidavit saying I'm no longer involved with the business, you know, it's kind of a... I think she submitted something in the application, right? No, no, I mean, I only submitted the one that I signed. No, no. But so, I I, look, I, you know, I don't want to get into your personal business, but it says here that we may be in the process of getting divorced, which is... It's coming in June, for sure. I already moved You on. have filed? No, but I already set a date. You set a date to file? Yes. Why? I haven't gone yet, because I don't have the money yet right now. So I'm trying to move out everything first, then deal with that. And the child is? It's hers. Her child. Are you still working at Royal Care? No, that's her. So that's the other that's, person. I could do one if that's the. the... If no, you need, I, if you need additional. Look, I, I want to support you. You know, this is a sticky situation. And... I know, but we thought it was from her, not from me. I apologize if I misunderstood. I understood that we that the request was for an affidavit. Uh, I was under the impression that it was an affidavit from the individual, uh, not from my client. But if we need to, we can supplement it and. Specifically, tell me what it is that you would need in addition to an affidavit. I, know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it would do, honestly. You know. Mm. What time do you close? They're going to be open from 12 to 4 uh, a.m. Um, and uh, it's a restaurant, less than 500 square feet. Uh, can hold about 45 people at one time. They've been open since 2018. They've had their license since 2023, right. yeah. the temporary license, and there have been no yeah. incidents. And you've been running it since 2018? Yes, we after we opened, yeah. I mean, I think that... I'm going to just ask that, that she submit, uh, do it on condition that she submit an affidavit. With that. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I'm going to approve, but I'm going to ask that we have an affidavit from you, a sworn okay. statement from you, that we can hold you accountable okay. as the applicant, that uh, she has nothing to do with okay. the business. We okay. shall submit that. So it's, my approval is conditioned on us receiving that. Okay. Madam Chair. All right. Um, look. If she was involved before, if she's not going to be moving forward, that's what I need from you. Okay, no so just keep it that way. Okay. Okay. I have one. In, I have a copy in my car. I can email it right away. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm going to vote to approve. Thank you. With the same affidavit. The same condition. Yes, please. Okay. Next is 19 Tipsy Shanghai Restaurant Management Inc. Listen, they're punching women in the face. The number of reporter. I just saw that. Yeah, just a little while. What's going on? Good afternoon. My name is Frank Palillo. How are you all? What's the story here? Offering compromise sure. before you. 19. Your client leave? My client is. I've asked him to stay seated, though. Oh. The place closed. Didn't turn the license in. It's as simple as that. Okay. I think for one month actually it wasn't turned in. Generally, as you know, I do know. We we take cancel and bond. So can I take the bond? Yes. Oh. All right. I'm gonna counter. Could we could we do the five hundred? You have to, you must realize, Chair, that I'm only representing this client as a courtesy. I really represent the guy who's waiting with that temporary behind it. Taking the bond is a difference of thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. I'm sorry. On a place that all they did was not deposit the license and safekeeping. They had a clean record. They never had any issues. And my client, if you must know, is paying the fine on. Do you do you represent this license? You represent both. I do. Okay. It's not a it's not a two sided deal. All right, because it's you, I'll take five hundred. Because the chair says it's you, I'll take five hundred. Thank you for that. 
Next is 7-11-W-32, Inc. Just 11? 10, 11, 12? 7. 7. seven. But the, the name is 11. W <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, Charles Wynn for the licensee. Uh, Samuel Ahn was the, is the attorney of record uh, for this matter. Uh, Sam couldn't be here today, so he asked if I would be able to cover for him. It's a uh, CNC for a COVID violation. Uh, the CNC is uh, requesting a $1,000 monetary penalty. This is not a COVID violation. This is actually a very serious health violation garbage pests dirty blades food contact service unclean it's you know it reads pretty disgusting to me i wouldn't want my food coming out of this kitchen so have the conditions been corrected uh, he has told me that the conditions were corrected he paid a, a heavy fine on it uh, that i specifically asked him can you provide evidence for that and tell them to um uh, can you provide evidence of that? And uh, we're going to hold it over until 425. Yes, I will. That's all. Over to four. Commissioner, are you okay with that? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. Next is 48, Bhakti 71, Inc. Good afternoon, members of the board. I'm Kenneth Frankel. I'm the attorney for Bhakti 71, Inc. With regard to uh, our offer of a letter of warning in this case, we uh, the information that my client has is the is basic information that the of uh, what happened from his employee's perspective. Uh, there was an incident that happened somewhere outside where we don't know what happened, nothing happened inside the premise. Uh, one of the uh, people that was involved in the incident came into the store asking for help, and uh, it was my client's employee that called the police. That was the extent of what we knew uh, of what happened. We communicated that to the uh, attorney for the liquor authority that uh, brought the case. And she was doing her investigating uh, through the detective. Uh, our, our position the entire time was that we just helped out the person that came to the store. All right, I'm going to dismiss it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I concur. Thank you. Next is 40, She Messy Court. Hello, good afternoon. Sam Park representative. She's Messi. The owner applicant, Mark Russo, is here. We are applying for an on premise liquor license. Where and, is uh, Edward our... Morgan Place? Yeah. Oh, I see. Got me on that. I've never heard of it. Yeah, I know. Me neither. Where is that? It's one five in Edward the... Morgan Place. 157. No one on the no west way. side. It's in Washington Heights. It's 157 to Broadway. It's yeah. that little, it's one street, and that's where people go on and off the Henry Hudson Parkway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know where that is. That's part of the problem. Nobody knows where it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is hard. That I actually drove by there. You okay, right? Yeah. All right. Um, you have a temp that's been operating without problems, recorded music only. What time are you going to close? We close around midnight on the weekends and 10 to 11. All right, I'm going to do midnight across the board just because of your location is difficult. Um, recorded music only. Uh, is it possible we can change to the method of operations so we can add up the uh, karaoke? So there's good. Yeah, so you want to add karaoke? We want to add karaoke and we mm -hmm. want to add. We had uh, somebody come in and do an event, they bought in the flamenco dancing group like two two dancers a guitarist and uh and a vocalist but it's a traditional like flamenco dancing music mm -hmm. it's acoustic mm -hmm. um and everybody loved it <laughs> and the neighbors were coming in and we were like it's closed it's it's a private party and they still wanted to come in so a lot of people were asking that live like on that side of 
Riverside Drive. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys should do live music. So okay, okay. So don't push it too far. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> so we're gonna do. <laughs> We're going to do the bathroom waiver is fine. Karaoke, live acoustic music, yes. employee dancing only on the weekends, and yes. only artful, tasteful dancing, please. Employee dancing? That's what we call it, employee dancing. Okay. <laughs> when you hire someone to dance as opposed to the patrons are dancing. That's what it's called. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I'm like, my employee dancing, it's called. I'm, I'm sending them home. <laughs> no, that's what it's called. Um, so karaoke live acoustic music with weekend employee dancing midnight across the board i vote to approve i vote to approve with those conditions thank you very much thank you paul thank you thank you next is 2499 montauk liquors inc same part with the center uh this is the wait what number sorry 20. no contest please 2000 Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, I would take 2000. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. 2, thank 000. you, boy. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Next is 28 Casa Bella Restaurant Corp. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Afternoon. I'm not the last one today. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene Anton for the uh, licensee. Um, there was a second violation. We're asking if it could uh, be referred back to council's office. Sure, go back to council's Great. office. Great, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And the council. Next is 39, Dinner Service Inc. And our Z Liquor Store. 39? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, my name is Rigo Reyes, and I represent the applicant, uh, Sule Rodriguez. Uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the disapproval on February 15, 2020, uh, 2023, uh, the reason of the deny was uh, the uh, legal authority can't be able to approve two legal stores next to each other. I just want to uh, mention that. So this case has already been heard by full board. There was a disapproval hearing and um, ALJ Perlman um, have a very long detailed um, uh, decision that he wrote that recommends that yeah, it, full it, board again, um, you know, affirm our own decision and that the decision was not arbitrary and capricious. The next step you have is to file an article seven in court and so I'm going to accept the judge's decision, and you can choose to. Can you the give me? Can you give me a? Can you give me time to explain to the? Uh, what, no, what I'm it's here? already been done. This is not the forum for it. Um, can you give me the opportunity to explain? No, it's or, already been done, sir. It's that's not how this works. Your next step is to go to court, and you can explain to the judge why you think our decision was arbitrary and capricious. Um, but. You've had your day in court twice already here in front of the agency, and you can also find a different location. I, I get that, you know, but can it's the work is can it's when the agency issues a final determination as it's done here? Yeah, your option is to go to a Supreme Court judge within four months and file what's called an Article 78. Procedure. Can you email me that letter that the, uh, the final decision? Should have already gotten it in them uh, as an email. This is the final. Yeah, this, this is, is the final, final decision. Right. So yeah. you would have four months from today. Can you can you email it to me? That way I could have it in writing. That well, way you I could provide this. You'll, you'll get a courtesy email saying that your application has been disapproved. Yes. Okay. And this is the final decision. And this. Yes. Thank you. Right. Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. Next Thank is you. 57, 613 Bushwick Avenue, LLC. Good afternoon, members of the authority. Aurelia Tavares, representative for, six, for Hanks, easier than 613. I'm here with 
one of the owners. We have fellow Van Kooten. Where's the other owner? He just had a baby this week and he didn't want to leave her. Okay. I'm sorry, if you want, we can, if you want, we can reschedule for him to be here. But I provided his resume and both curriculum vitae's and um, uh, I was just going to go if you want me to go through uh, the presentation. Chair Fan. So I don't really need a whole presentation. I just want an explanation of what happened with the availing. Because um, you guys obviously have a lot of experience. So, yeah, happened? I mean, basically, I let my excitement get a hold of my naivety with trusting someone um, when we went into the project. Uh, the former uh, licensee put us in touch with the person that was handling their paperwork. We were told there was going to be a corporate changeover while we were applying for our temp license. That, in fact, did not happen. Uh, and in fact, the previous company is now not in the state. They have multiple uh, lawsuits against them. Um, and we lost everything. We lost all of our business. It almost ruined our entire company. Um, like I said, I just shame on me for trusting someone that I was recommended to um, to run the business. And like I said, it just, you know, as soon as the veiling happened, we surrendered the license. We complied. We tried to work with the owners. They refused to contact the SLA officer. They refused every email notification, every phone call. Uh, there was no working with them. Okay. And when I saw this, I ran and I told him, like, oh my God, this is a veiling. And they, we just got no cooperate. And then he said, what is that? What do you, what do you mean? And really, they didn't know because, you know, I frantically stepped in and significant experience yeah I'm fine with so you know it's like it goes for you and against you when you have a lot of experience we expect you to not get involved in a situation like this but i also understand if you get into business with bad people it, you know sometimes you get you get screwed um yeah it's been a really hard two years trying to come back from that um so we're hoping to make a really steadfast uh business with this location okay. it is actually the location that is owned by the former gas station owner that was there and he turned it into <coughs> bar space but he has no bar experience um mm -hmm. it came to us and i think it's going to be a really pinnacle for the community it's in a place where we're trying to offer a lot of sundays for families we understand the neighborhood really well i live five minutes from there um we know it's an area that's desperately okay. in need of something like that because there's been a lot of illegal bars in that area and we're trying to bring something that will really stand out in this and community. you're okay with all the community board steps Correct. it's 2 a.m monday to friday 2 a.m saturday and 12 a.m sundays um no music outdoors outdoor space closed by 10 a 10 p.m yep Are you not providing food at this location? We are. We have a uh, surplus of uh, food trucks. We've actually just made a partnership with one food truck that will be in the space permanently, Empire Barbecue. Uh, so okay. they'll be providing the food for us. Okay. All right. Uh, with those stipulations and the community board's um, support, I'm going to, uh, and no issues with the temp, I'm going to vote to approve. Thank, thank, thank you. you. <coughs> I also vote to approve. Thank you. Well, thank you. I have two more right yeah, behind okay. this. Wow, well, I had other people signed in after that. It, it's next okay. one Just is. Let her go. I'm sorry. Let me get out of the way. What number? Just um, let her go. I am. You're a number one. Uh, El Gran that Lali. is Lima. Yep. Number Nialtican. one. They were going to go to community board. Do I get anything? Oh, I'm sorry. Number one is Nialtica. Yes. We have to adjourn it. The community board put it over for their full board meeting the 29th of this month. So, do the you want, oh, that, so it's uh, 515. That's 515. Okay. And okay. then I have Lima. Hold on. Commissioner, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm sorry, Commissioner Leon. And then 10, 11, and 12, Lima Restaurant, restaurant, uh, restaurant Corp. Lima. We said. 10, 11, and 12. 515. What do you want to do? Oh. I think you should bring your client next time. Uh, this is 10, 11, and 12. Yes. You, you should to, bring your you, client. You want to 425. 420. Uh, can we put it at 515 as well then? Sure. 515? Okay, great. Is that okay, Commissioner? That's okay. Okay, because he needs to hear it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. that. Um, members of the authority. Okay. 
Oh, thank you. I, I, don't, I, didn't, I wanted to, I wanted to say that at the beginning, but it's starting to, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Next is 24, 12 First Ave, Restaurant Court. Good afternoon. My name is Frank Palillo. I was bamboozled into standing here on behalf of Mr. Flynn. And I believe there's an offer and compromise in front what of you. What is it? There's an offer and compromise in front of you. 24. Oh, yeah, 2,000. 2,000. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Next is 21, World Books, Inc. Good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, my name is Teddy Nkaz, I'm the representative. Uh, Mr. Abaka Hamani is the owner of uh, World Books, Inc. There's a settlement uh, in front of you. I must say I know Mr. Uh, Hamani for a long period of time, and basically he dropped the ball when this happened. He was going through a difficult time, so I hope you uh, take that into consideration. So how did you get this liquor into the store? Uh, first of all, let me apologize for what happened. You know, uh, I've been uh, struggling with my parents for the last two years. You know, they live in India. Okay. I made 12 trips, you know, uh, between back and That's forth. That's okay. I'm just asking, how yeah. do you so, think you got the liquor? So we had, the uh, we had a manager, Jose Tenesco. You know, he was trained was getting trained to be the manager and he was uh, placing the orders and I think he, you know, uh, he got a little over enthusiastic, I don't know, but he was supposed to order only to the, you know, Manhattan Beer Company, but I think he, he ordered somewhere else and he picked up the, you know. I know, one. but they are not supposed, so you got it through the wholesaler? I'm sorry? You got it through the wholesaler? Uh, I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't know. You know, he got it from a store someplace in Bronx. So. Okay, you didn't look at your books and records to see where it came from? Because in theory, the people who are distributing this type of product should not have sold it to you. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it, it, I dropped the ball. It's, it's, it's. I profusely apologize for I what know, happened. I know, you don't have to feel so bad. I'm just yeah, asking you because I'm trying to collect other information. Uh, you know, like, uh, due to state of my mind, I, you know, I didn't notice that he did that, you know. Okay. And he, he you know, and, and I promise you it will never happen again. All right. So, right. you know, you are really young license you have other businesses yes you have other licenses yes okay just make sure that you are watching what's coming in and what's what orders are being placed and what you're allowed to sell and not allowed to sell yes okay i'm gonna accept ten thousand thank you i, I concur with ten thousand thank you thank you thank you thank you next is number nine a and b fulton court Good afternoon, Thomas McCallan. Uh, before you, A and B Fulton Corp is a conditional no contest. I'm going to accept fifteen hundred. Excuse me. I'm going to accept fifteen hundred. I concur with fifteen hundred. Okay, if I could just—I know it's late and the lightning round's coming up, but in this <laughs> instance, I submitted all these charges were dismissed. Nothing to do with the restaurant. It was a, a, an ex-husband, and it was a domestic case. But as I submitted, this, every, every charge was dismissed here. And the fact that it was unrelated to the business, I would see if you can do anything a little better to improve what's been a, a miserable two years. It's, it's consistent with another item that we had today. So, you know, um, I should have gotten here. The early. law is the law. And I should have gotten here real early. <laughs> it's not about that, but you Understood. know, it's, it's already the lower version of it's the other one got higher so okay it's it's something that we take seriously 
Um, if people get arrested, they need to report it. Yep. Um, so thank you for asking. You have anything else? I do. I have a, a, a final it's a licensing matter. It, it, right, Commissioner? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. They, they so four it. is, uh, it's number four is next. It's 220 Osteria LLC. Osteria. This is an application for an on-premises liquor. I'm representing Nando Gorchin. I've represented him for about 25 years. He's an experienced restaurateur, currently operating two restaurants. He's had eight others. It's his formula. It's a, it's a Mediterranean bistro. It's dining. He opens at noon. He closes at 10 p.m. Um, really, he's had no issues. And um, so, again, I don't do the technology, but our agency licensing bureau opines that this is a 500 foot case. And so whatever you think, you need to submit yourself to the 500 foot process. So I'm not going to disapprove this because that's otherwise okay. what I would do. But well, I'm going to ask you to actually, uh, I'm sending this back to licensing. I'm going to ask you to submit the personal questionnaire and we'll try to expedite it. Okay. okay? But you need to resubmit to the 500 foot think, hearing process and let one of our ALJs redo nope. a 500 foot hearing, which I Chair. generally do not do. But I, otherwise, this is getting denied. Chair Finn, if I could speak to you, this uh, this has been a, a matter of pending a long time. Uh, the temporary has been approved, it's established. I have labored to demonstrate that it's not a 500 foot matter, it's in the file. The, there were only two licensed premises. It was all submitted with the reconsideration. They have it. They have approved the temporary. So this is this issue has been addressed. And uh, again, I've, I have the documentation. It's in the file. I know it's something has changed since then, and that's a determination. And I don't. But we visit a lot of these things. So, but, but again, it's been keep the temp. But do the 500 foot hearing again. But, but it's not 500 foot matter. There are only two places. I can also deny it and then your term gets rescinded. So which one do you want? Well, no, I, I mean, I'd like to be able to articulate why I think what we're doing is going to be duplicative of what I've been doing for the past year. The mix up came up for the measurement to Manhattan College, which has a catering establishment, which is well beyond the 500 feet. It's over a thousand feet. I, I have a survey or you have the survey in there. I can give you what I have here sh showing what was on ramp. Aren't essentially you asking us to make a determination on facts that are being disputed? Licensing has and licensing. You're saying they have because they issued a temporary license? No, because they have the documents that there are only two licensees within a 500 foot radius. That's what I'm that's, I don't no, think that that follows. No, it doesn't. All right. At this point, I don't know what else I can produce the next hearing because everything has been it's submitted. Just do the personal, just do the public interest questionnaire. We will redo the five foot hearing because the determination is not something that we can change. Okay. So just, just follow the process. And again, I need to advocate for my client doing the 500 foot rule hearing when it's not a 500 foot matter. It, it, it just that, seems that ridiculous seems to me from what I've heard that that is what's in dispute and there's a process for deciding. Facts. And I've submitted all that. No. I've submitted all that. Apparently, apparently the process has not been followed. Well, apparently, apparently there are a lot of apparently that could be bogging this down. Is the it the PIQ there? was not submitted yet. Excuse me? The PIQ was not yet submitted. No, it was never. It was never submitted because it was determined it's no longer a 500 foot matter. That was not determined. Who determined so, that by you? What's that? You're, you're the no, one. on my submissions and reconsideration. Right, but no, but that doesn't mean that. Yeah, the decision hasn't been made. Exactly. And I understand you're interpreting it that way, but it hasn't been. So the recommendation is submit the PIQ and then. Exactly. Now we've waited over a year and I've cooperated in every step of the way with the liquor authority. If it's either. No, you've actually wasted the year. I mean, you could have just submitted the PIQ and then the ALJ would have had it. So I understand you're advocating for your client, but this is the best way forward to help your client get a license. Otherwise, we can vote to deny it and you can refile. Well, one or the other. it sounds like I'm going to have to take the request if you could provide this, Donald, 
um, who would I request the public interest finding application from? It'll be licensing now because that's yes. that I it's going back, going to, back licensing. to licensing. I'll, I'll request it from licensing. Yes, and we will expedite it on our end, and you should be back here soon. And I hope that you, you know, do that seriously so that the ALJ can, you know, be on in support, and then we will we'll go from there. And in the meantime, just operate. You know, well, we're not operating yet. He hasn't. We haven't opened on. But on you have a temp. It was just obtained, but we're not ready because he didn't want to invest any money until we knew we were ready. So I'll follow through on it. I'll, I'll make the submission, and then we'll uh, we'll all assist each other in getting an okay. expedited review. All right. Okay. Please yep. CC me on the email once you do the submission. Okay. All, all right. Sure. With the sure. public interest. Thank you. All be well. Thank you very much, uh, Jonathan. There's no one else here, correct? All right. So number six is a no contest default at pleading. Yes, it should go back. Yes, back to council's office. Uh, Commissioner, you okay? Yes, I am. 13 is an offer of 2000. I will accept 2000. You had something? Oh, okay. 2000 is fine. 16 is an offer of 2000? 2000. 2000 is fine. 18 is an offer of 4000? 4000. And Commissioner? 4000 is fine. Uh, so 22 and 23, uh, Secretary's office held that over to May 15th prior That's to the fine. meeting. Uh, 25 is an offer of 5,000. I'm going to lower this to 4,000 just to be more consistent. Um, so sell to minor with a record. So I'm going to do 4,000. Is that okay? 4,000 is fine. 27 is an offer of 6,500. 6,500. 6,500 is fine. 30 is an offer of 3,500. Um, I'm actually going to increase this to 4,000 because it's a sell to minor with an improp, with a nicotine. What do you think, Donald? You think that because there's clean, it should be 35 or it should be 4,000? Uh, I mean, it, it's two charges. Yeah. So, oh, you're talking about, with I the, mean, with then, the I'm, yeah. then I should be at 6,000. Uh, ATAP reduction doesn't apply here, so, or anything. Yeah, so then it would be 6,000, so, but, uh, 6,000. Oh, yeah, 4,000 or 35. <laughs> sure. It should um, be 6,000. I think, I think Shannon should have Oh, the facility. It's first time. That's just yeah. for the sales. Right. Then so, you have yeah. I think that makes sense. 4,000 fine. Yeah, 4,000. Next is 38 is an offer of 2,000. This is a. Um, People in basement drinking. And this is large amounts of liquor. Um, and they did not show up. Can you bring them in? Over Let's the, hold this over and bring them in. Okay. Thank you. What day? It's 425. Thank you, Donald. Yeah. So 42, we received a request to adjourn to the April 25th meeting. The attorney's out of the country. That's fine. 425. Commissioner. 425. 43. Uh, so this is a disapproval hearing uh, for valid table court. Basically, uh, the applicant's not even disputing this. They've, re they've reapplied and received conditional approval at the same location, but just for procedural okay. issues. All right. Thank you, ALJ Perlman, for writing this thorough decision. I'm going to um, affirm again um, that uh, this is disapproved. I also concur. 44 is an offer of 6,500. 6,500. 65 is good. 45 is an offer of 2,500. 
I'll accept the uh, 2,500. My turn? Yep. 2,500 is fine. Uh, 46 and 47, Secretary's office held us over to the yep. April 25th meeting. 425. 49, 50, and 51 is an offer of cancel and bond. Um, yeah, this really bugs me. Guys, this is very serious, so I'm going to go to revoke and bond, counter with revoke and bond. Revoke and bond. Fifty-two is an offer of thirty-five hundred. This is also very serious. This is a very young license um, with six dates of improper conduct in yeah, yeah, I got in that. eighteen months. Um, right. Yeah, I I agree. I got all the dates listed. All right. I'm at cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. Fifty three is an offer of six thousand. This is also very serious. This is this licensee's third sale to minor, second at this location. I'm gonna counter at seven thousand. Seven thousand. So sixty one was held over to the April twenty fifth meeting by Secretary's office. The opposition was notified. This was due to what did you say, sixty one? 61, correct. What Do about, oh, did we do 58? Yeah. Yes. What was, what was 58? I'll have to go back and look. 58? 58 yeah, we denied that one. That that was the one where they, that was the one where um, they oh. were, it's an upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. So again, 61 has been held over. All right, thank you, Tom. Yeah, nothing else. Awesome. Meetings adjourned.